I'm starting. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Hello, and welcome to Anarcho Agony Aunt's Pajama Edition. This is Rowan, this is Marianne. Yes. We're the Anarcho Agony Aunt's. We are now filming, yeah, like a bedroom, sort of. Special. Special. Special bedroom. Don't always expect a theme from us. This is just because we're feeling feeling like it these yeah, days. Yeah, and but... also, you know, like our last one was in the middle of summer looking all Love Island. Now, you know, winter's come and so we're feeling cozy. Yeah. No, pajamas. Yeah, sort of Bridget Jones sort of vibes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When she was happy and single. That yeah, I kind of went hard. down a hill somewhere. Was happy and single? <laughs> Yeah, um, this, I've had this since I'm 15, so sorry if it's all a bit off, but yeah. it's well cute. I've had this since I was 15. We, we don't, we don't upgrade our wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is my hot water bottle, my mum made it. I was like, make one that's like a, like a little, like a little monster. So she made an old man, so now I sleep with an old man. Don't we all? Oh, we wish, anyways. <laughs> sorry. Hi. Sorry, Daddy. By not, not my dad, that was, that was a fancy <laughs> daddy. I wasn't talking to my dad, I don't talk to my dad like that. But yet you'd like to. No, not So course. I wonder what's that about, the you know? Thing. The daddy thing. I got into it because of that. And because I think my dad would be really upset if he found out I was calling a, a dude daddy in a sexual way. It's weird. But apparently, it, I, I read a lot in my kink groups about daddy. It's huge. And it's not considered at all anything to do with daddy issues. So why that though? But clearly, come on. Yeah, and I like it yeah. too, but... I guess because... Because it's like power but without threat, whereas like master or whatever is like power with threat, maybe? Yeah, but of course it's with threat. It's but like they smack you in that. Can you call someone daddy in a non BDSM way? No, right? <laughs> no, but uh, I'll tell you what, so I've been. My big discovery in the last couple of months, and we haven't really done this for a while, has been audio porn. Oh my days. Try Quinn.com. Try it, guys. It's flippin' amazing. And it's actually Try Quinn in the, in the name. Oh, try Quinn. Yeah. Try, try Quinn. So try, try Quinn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and uh, the w some of the like highest end recordings now because they tr just try started it out are like the daddy ones. So, so I've like recently been discovering that side of things. As if I needed to be told one more time that I have daddy issues. Like for fuck's sakes. Yeah, but you're getting out in a healthy way by jacking off on a overnight train. <laughs> Completely random example I picked out of nowhere. <laughs> I was meant to be private, Rowan. It was a hypothetical scenario. <laughs> yes, um, sure. Well, so thanks uh, thanks to the people that bought us the drinks, by the way. We all, all two of you, looking at you, the other billion b viewers. Yeah, but to be fair, not bad wine. Mm -hmm. Not bad wine, so that's good. Yeah, we love all of you viewers, but the ones that pay us a bit more. And you're not even paying us, you're just you're just making us not lose money. Like, yes, yes, hundred percent. We definitely are losing money on this. So, thank uh, you, guys. You know who you are. Yeah. You're in our hearts and in our stomachs, and tomorrow you'll be in our throbbing heads. Yeah. <laughs> so, I love we... how we've become like just resentful at this point. It's just bad, yeah, actually. Yeah, bitter. We need to be less bitter. Empathy, sympathy. Sure, Apologies. sure. Yeah, for sure. It's just. It... <laughs> It's just we are losing out on, you know, as well we say, on this project in many, many ways. Yeah, and this is a Friday night. We could both be on hot dates if it wasn't for you and we love you so much. I mean, as if we've been invited to anything. God, this is a bad start because it makes it look like we've been sad. Actually, I've been getting on, like, very, very well in the past mm -hmm. couple of months. I've been having lots of fun adventures. Your girl. And honestly, I haven't had this much fun sexually in, like years so i've been having pretty damn good fun so i am an authority as a player <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. so yeah no it was just like why did i make us well sound like boring or whatnot it's just this it's one night and boring. we really we've been planning to yeah we thought like we reserved this yes we, and we work so much these days mm -hmm. and so we were like yeah no okay let's finally do this days because we've got so many questions and you guys are so patient with us and thank you yes yes yeah, we actually booked this day in advance. That's the reason we're at home in our pajamas. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we definitely told a bunch of people that we can't mm -hmm. go to things. Hundreds. <laughs> yeah, and so all the all the suitors and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we crack on? Right. Yes. Let's do this. All right. Well, we haven't even checked how we actually look on, in the frame. I'm kind of all the subconscious. I think I'm not in enough because I'm a little bit. Edgy. No, I think I think you're good. I'm leaning towards you. Okay. Because, yeah, the whole flag was in the frame, so therefore we must be in the frame yeah. if we're within the flag. <laughs> I love how it's like pajama edition and I don't give a shit, but secretly you're like, oh, how do I look? Well, obviously. 
I mean, I'm very aware that when I have my fringe down and my hair back, I have a bald patch here, and so I keep turning like this to like make my bald patch not show. It's not an actual bald patch, it's just where the hair parts in two directions. Yeah, of course. Oh, and we did recently actually, yeah, thank you so much, like Clementine, like doing a, like a video with, with, with uh, uh, that I was lucky enough to appear in, and like a bunch of comments were like, can't believe in these like girls thinking that putting on femi like putting on makeup is feminism or whatnot. Is and that just what like we explicitly said that's not the case, but it's just really really funny that you like. That putting on make they, they were saying putting on makeup is like, not feminism. Well, they're kind of saying like um, this is not a feminist project. This is not a feminist project. Yeah, because you're putting on makeup. Just like this is not an anti-fascist project. Well, and yeah, of course. I wish people would tell me what kind of project I am doing. So I can put it in my bio. I've, yeah, and I, was, I feel like we should be like covered in like anti-fascist tattoos, perhaps, and like everything be done in anti-fascist flags for anyone to we think just that it is. We just need to bring along that. a fascist and punch him occasionally to make yeah. it like to make it seem like we're actually, you know, engaging. Oh my God, that would be. That Where's your old man? We can pretend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so that's the fascist. And we are actually... Am I a real anti fan now? Am um, I a real anti fan um, now? Oh, I feel bad for the old man. Your <laughs> mum made him with love. Yeah. <laughs> I do snuggle it. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. He's, he's into it. No, but you get the gist. You get the gist. I feel like that would just be like a... Um, what, what do the kids do nowadays? TikTok. Like, just yeah. that bit. Yeah. <laughs> God, we are bitter these days. What's up? Mm. To be fair, like I, it took me hours to like set up as well. So I think, so I think we're just a bit, you know, after work, tired. Mm. It's like nine p.m., nine thirty, something like that. And now yeah. we're having to do work. That again. we love, but it is still sure. laborious. Mm -hmm. So All let's right. crack on. Okay, um, I'll read this out and then we'll discuss it. <laughs> That's what we do, right? Hi, AAA. Found the show and have enjoyed catching up on them. Learned a lot. On the latest episode, you welcomed questions outside of dating. I'm currently job ser searching and on universal credit. Universal credit is um, the kind of universal benefit system we have in the UK for our international viewers. It's like social security in America, right? All the different benefits are now put under universal credit. It's a shit new system. Yeah. I do not have the savings to leave until I have suitable employment. Due to my neurotype, I cannot apply to most jobs, even though I am able-bodied. This makes me look work shy to people who do not understand my limits. My job coach keeps on directly telling me that I'm faking and cannot be disabled, and it's really fucking with me. I have a diagnosis from the NHS. If I, if I go too passive and do not argue back, she wins the argument by becoming the capable authority. If I state my case too effectively, I might appear so able that she would see my reaction as proof of her biased views. Every meeting burns up all my spoons to the point where I'm worried sick all day. I feel like echoing Dip Daniel Blake and my confidence is terrible. How, do you have any hints on how to deal with this? Right, well, um, thank you so much again for believing uh, in us, the, for our capability in covering something like this, because we don't necessarily believe in our capability in that. Like a couple of questions that we have received that were to do well more with like for lifestyle as such was police, which we're quite confident talking about, and unions, which again, we're involved in. But something, you know, stuff to do with benefit system, though I've signed on quite a few times in my life, and uh, but been lucky enough to, to, to be, a, you know, a, a I guess without a diagnosis as such and um so didn't have to necessarily d deal with these hurdles but um clearly you, you 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 must see that this is more of a technical issue rather than something that we can necessarily help with yeah the only um there's a few questions that aren't clear here it, um i i, I part-time sometimes at citizens advice bureau and basically i would recommend them being your first port of call because their whole shtick is helping people um sort out getting their benefits that yeah. they're right uh, due to and everything but it's not clear because you say you're just doing on job seekers or it doesn't say what elements of uc you're on so for example if you have a diagnosis from the nhs are you getting pip or esa to supplement your your job seeking because that could obviously be a huge bonus if you're not and um yeah you have a diagnosis do you have a gp letter to support it this kind of evidence that would be useful to bring to somewhere like citizens advice if you were to try and make a case or to like even make an appeal against the DWP. So basically, we can't really answer this because it's it's more of a procedural thing in terms of making sure you get what is due to you. I, mean, I guess we can talk about the emotional thing of how to handle being treated like shit. 100%, because basically what we can and want to say is huge solidarity. Mm -hmm. You are, you seem to be so like, I almost want to say like you're empathetic to these services all like as well, like you don't, you, you feel, 
doesn't feel like you're all just like screw it all you still want to like kind of play the game which is very admirable of you you know i guess it is literally your only survival i wonder if there's a way for you to publish these findings like whether that's like a, a twitter thread that a lot of people i think would be interested in this if you wrote out a blog post about this i'd be you know be more than welcome to share and stuff like that because i think you have sort of kind of fallen in between the cracks where they always say you know sort of like not classified in any particular place and and it's due to the austerity cuts from 2010 that people like you had to deal with this fucking shit and that's just it's so gross yeah yeah but if you have a diagnosis and you're not getting help as a result of that it sounds to me like you should be getting pip rather than just job seekers but i like again we don't know the spe specifics of your situation and the best thing you can do is take all evidence you have to experts like citizens advice like lots of other charities that also do similar work in helping people um fight cases against the dwp yeah i wonder if you can also like log every single instance that yes. you've spoken to uh, your you know, supervisor, whatever they're called um, these days. Job coach. Well, yeah, yeah. And you're the, you know they're called like job seekers customers now? Mm -hmm. It's so gross. Um, yeah, so so with your particular, I suppose, complaints. <laughs> but then again, like, yeah. right? So my, my, you know, advice here is like, yeah, log all the stuff. But surely that makes you look like, you know, you're, you can just find a job and that sort of stuff. Well, if you're not putting it in your official work log, definitely keep a diary of interactions you've had with her and exact quotations of where she said things are not um, appropriate. I wouldn't necessarily put it in your UC work log until you've checked with an expert about how to handle this. But in a way, you're lucky as in, like, you do have a NHS diagnosis. Like, that's really important. Mm -hmm. And that really always will stay with you. And that's something to definitely be able to push as such. But you'll need an official vulnerabilities assessment from the NHS if you're to be able to claim um being out of work or needing supplemented work from a mental health basis what's the cab advice is he got he's so I that was meant to, did i meant should i have mentioned that i work for cab i don't know it's not like i'm not like tr telling everyone trade secrets. should though yeah, yeah yeah i was wondering whether i was like breaking confidentiality but no it's not like i was talking about a case i was just talking about random info no yeah 100 percent. but yeah a lot of people don't use them nowadays because they feel kind of jaded and feel like it's not independent but it's to totally independent and you can trust them so that's what i would do yeah, but publicize it. The more stuff like that we mm -hmm. can get out there, the better. Um, and meanwhile, like in between and after these visits, which make you feel like shit. Treat yourself. Yeah. And we Hang don't out care. With friends. Yeah, we don't. We don't mind it in that sort of like oh self care sort of way because that's just like making you feel like it's an individual. Like no, it's a systemic issue. Yeah, it's not your individual issue. It is a systemic issue. Like something like ridiculous like 65 percent of council budgets have been cut since 2010 you know this and i hate to be like oh vote lo labor but not tories that but like since 2010 these stuff ha this stuff has been decimated and i mean you'll yes. know more than anyone of course um also i don't know if you're seeing a therapist or something but if you i know you have a diagnosis but if you can have back up evidence of like your inability to work would that would also be useful like make your case as strong as possible yeah. And also, if you don't have a therapist, try and get a therapist. I know on the NHS, it's fucking impossible. But for just generally helping with your issues. But I guess I feel like I'm preaching to the choir a little bit. Well, yeah, of course. But I mean, it is your main... It is... It's kind of like... Is, is there a way to hustle something where that is not necessarily your only income? You know, is there a way to... Where you, again, like, yeah, talk about these things and perhaps... I mean, I don't know, in some ideal world, get Patreon out of this or something along those lines. I mean really where you can mm. use this like weakness into some sort of strength and i'm thinking secret barrister for instance right no one knows who they are but they so are like know this? it's like a twitter account basically who's just like they're um and people by now are just sending them information they're just exposing um hmm. the way that the prison system uh is broken so anyone that wants to well not just prison sorry legal system is broken so anyone that wants to find out about that just like logs into their account and um or basically just checks their workout um, so if there's any shape or form to just like, yeah, makes it make this into your strength. But I mean, again, it's kind of sounds a bit like we're making you work and that's not necessarily what we yeah. want to say at all. Yeah, it's also important not feeling like you're a failure for not working and taking time to yourself. Like, do you enjoy drawing pictures? Do you enjoy playing the guitar? Do you enjoy lying in a garden and doing absolutely fuck all? Like, try yeah. and do the thing. And yeah, the, the, the day before you have these meetings is going to feel horrible because I know what that's like. We all know what it's like going to job seekers meetings and being treated like you're like a criminal and how horrible they are. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just hoping that tide will turn soon enough, you know, because... It's getting more and more exposed is the good thing. Mm -hmm. And there's like some like 
quite nice. Not class action, but like broad spread, like legal cases being taken against um, the DWP and the other one about this stuff because of the failures, the massive evidence of the failures of um, universal credit in particular. Like a lot of like quite well established NGO type groups are doing a lot of reporting on this and it is it's like universally seen as a universal failure yeah so and yet like i mean a lot of the time when i would be going to job seekers like my you know the supervisor or whatever again they're like you can just tell they see through the bullshit they just like have learned lines and they're saying them to you and it's just heartbreaking because i can tell they're like you have left these a lot of the time but they've just been again it's just so yeah machined into into this that's the thing i would love that. someone like you or me to be the person at the desk but the second you're on that desk you become yeah. part of that system yeah, yeah. it's fucking bleak yeah is there anything sort of again in in the detail but but yeah in the future i mean i don't as you can see like we're you know we're two girls talking about i know blowjobs a lot of the time this is not necessarily our forte essentially mm. <laughs> yeah what we can really offer is sympathy because yeah that whole catch-22 of not sounding assertive and her going, you're right, and not sounding weak and her being right is just the worst, the worst thing. I cannot, yeah, I cannot imagine how frustrating and upsetting that must be. Yeah. But yeah, the more evidence you can get, testimonies from GPs, from therapists, from the um, evidence that you've seen advisors and stuff, if you want to take this forward and make a case against it, maybe even just change it that worker because she sounds terrible. I bet there are Facebook groups about this stuff as well, Probably. you know? Probably, right? Mm. So I know if you can, again, just check out for those. Yeah, university, we, yeah, sorry, universal credit support system, so support groups yeah, or something. Yeah, certainly will be. Like, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. On a, on a side note, I don't, we don't, we, we were con talking quite a, a, a lot today because we were like de de deciding that we're going to film in, in my bed as such, but um, I don't, we don't smoke in our rooms. Like, this is really mm. weird. And I don't want you to think that we're just people that smoke in our rooms. Like, I, not that that matters that much, but like, we don't. And mm. we're like, are we gonna? And I kind of allowed it for one night only. And we have an open window and all of that stuff. But usually we don't do that. So not that that matters. I kind of, that's for me. Because I, again, I've been squatting for years. If people did just smoke in their rooms, I just like not into that. Yeah. So this is a one day only sort of thing. Not that it's gross for many other people or whatever, but I don't do this. I just want to point, point it out. Yeah, it's a special occasion. It's for you. <laughs> yes, yes, and I'm like airing out, cleaning, like yeah. changing the sheets, everything oh, as soon as this is done. A nice sunny day for it. I got sheets dry in an hour today, so lovely. Yeah, I've got some ready on that, so it's kind of like, it's weird. Like it's meant to be a cozy sort of Brid Bridget Jones sort of we're suffering setup, but it's also at the same time a bit like I don't know, a bit funny. Yeah, I mean I've never hung out in your room before either, so that's kind of weird. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Wait, where do we have the lighter? In my hand. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. All right, should we go yes. straight into the other ones? Okay. I did a sideways. You can zoom in now. Thank you. Hey, MNR. I recently discovered your project and I'm really enjoying it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been wanting to hear and participate in discussions on the topics you all have covered, but from an anarchist perspective, and especially hearing from women. Here is my question. I'm a 29-year-old male anarchist from the US. When it comes to dating, I've lived and visited areas that have anarchist staff. My political philosophical views are a big thing for me and finding someone with similar or interesting views is a big plus for me. But I've never dated an anarchist woman. When I go to anarchist lefty events, shows, online dating, etc., the vast majority of them are at best indifferent to me and usually aren't even interested in even holding a conversation. At best, I'm only able to attract hippie liberal types, which I can appreciate for them being who they are. But they're not as radical and far enough left as I am and would like, or would like, and would like. Any ideas on this? Why this might be the case? I'm aware that ever, even women, oh sorry, I'm aware that every woman isn't going to be interested in me, but I'd say that most people would say that I'm cute, so I don't think it's a matter of them not finding me attractive. I don't look or dress like an anarcho-punk type, so with tattoos, piercing, piercings, black leather, everything, so that could be a factor. I doubt people could even guess any of my worldviews based on my appearance. Anyways, thanks for your project and keep up the awesome work. So many feelings here. So I'm just going to check if the audience wants. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, yeah. You, I mean, what she said, that last sentence that you just like threw in there, that the thing, the thing is like, I don't look or dress like an anarcho-punk type with tattoos, piercings, black leather and everything. So that could be a factor. That is the factor. That is the factor. And that's fucking gross. Find me. I don't like those types either. Wow, you have a completely different take on this to me. Oh! 
wow, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> no, I guess that is good. I think you come across rather unbearably arrogant. Oh my god, I have so much sympathy with this person. Like, the anarcho women, they won't date me because I don't have tattoos. The hippies yes! will date me, but they're not good enough for me. Oh, come Having on. Having someone who has the same political philosophy as me is so important. Sure, look, we have done you the whole... You know what? I've never fucking read Kropotkin. <laughs> look, we have done the whole, like, should lefties only date lefties for a video, and we don't think that at all, for sure. And, like, um, definitely there is a whole thing of, like, people, like, being like, oh, I want to meet someone as radical as me or, as I am. And we've established that actually educating someone towards far left opinions is actually really really fun and yeah. you should be interested in doing that and i don't know why you would just straight away meet someone that has your political opinions but i can so see yeah, this i came like across too strong <laughs> I, I i i because you came across so strongly positive <laughs> i felt like i had to be just as strongly <laughs> negative <laughs> it's more i'm just i'm curious okay you go no 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 like i basically have the political opinions that I have, anarcho-syndicalist and that, and yet I hate the scene, I hate the aesthetics around it. I just, I mean, a lot of the time I definitely still look like a punk and act like a punk I was going to say, you have stuff. more of the aesthetic than I do, I would say. Yeah, 100%. And but also I mean, you're I've just more been into like, tattoos and... <laughs> but apart from that. No, but I've, but yeah, also, I've just been kind of like, yeah, yeah, I've just been, I suppose, what's the word? Um, brought up in that, so that's mm. all I know. But I want to escape from that, and I see those 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 spaces where... I mean, yeah, there have been there there've been boys that I thought everything fits so well, but they're like, you know, you don't have dreadlocks and tattoos, so I'm kind of not into you, that sort of thing. And so it's just it's such a shame. So it seems to me like that's kind of that sort of thing. I mean, basically, they, I think they want someone like that, but they can't get them because they're not like them. I'm wondering though. So he says. The vast majority of them are at best indifferent to me and usually aren't even interested in holding a conversation. I'm also curious about how you approach people. Well, yeah, sure. Like, they're like, what do I mean is there are several steps of this, like, sure, right? Sure, sure, sure. Like, I don't believe that every, if you're as nice and good looking as you say you are, <laughs> also, cool. like, congrats on the self esteem, seriously, actually. Yes. Like, I know I just, like, mocked you, but actually, it's really, like, nice to have someone who has, like, good opinion of themselves. No, but they're not like, oh, my fucking hottie. They go like, I'm cute, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's what I mean. Like, but yeah. congratulations on not shitting on yourself because, yes. you know, it's really hard not to shit on yourself sometimes. Yeah. But like, yeah, like, how are you approaching people? Are you launching straight into anarchist conversation? But are Rowan, you... we've been in those spaces. Again, like, I'm just thinking, you know, here in London, Berlin, and I bet US as well, you know, where everyone is the anarcho with, like, anarcho symbols all over the shop. And, and you know, someone walks in that is, has a bit more, like, normie aesthetics or whatnot, and everyone just looks at them condescendingly. God forbid you're wearing, ca like, cashmere from a car boot sale or fucking, or, I don't know, like, light brown jeans or whatever, and, like, a neutral t-shirt like everyone just looks at you like you're a fucking idiot yeah well say take my partner for example well yeah but i mean quintessential not anarchist aesthetic yeah but he's also stuck in that place okay when i say where well, i mean whatever yeah, okay like big an anarchist hotspot yeah yeah like the only one being that and you've been fighting like to change that aesthetic too and we both have been very much saying how mm. it's not like that I guess so. I guess what confuses me is like as an anarchist woman who hangs out in their spaces and has a lot of um, insecurities of not looking anarchist enough, I would find it so refreshing and nice to see a dude yes. who isn't. And that's why I'm finding it interesting which anarchist women you're trying it on with or whatever. Like, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't go straight up to a cross street and start flirting. I would be scared that they would judge me. Yeah, but also, like, I wonder, what, do you straight away go, like, hey, are you an anarchist then? But this is what I mean with yeah, how he's yeah, approaching yeah, them. Yeah. That's where that was coming That's from. Like, agreed, yeah. I are get you it. launching into a discussion of Bakunin's great ideas? Or are you saying, hey, what do you think of the band? Or, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not, like, also, if you're in an anarchist space, you don't need to prove your credentials. Like, everyone there. You don't what? You don't have to prove your credentials. Yes, you. No, yes, straight you away. Because you know what I've oh, discovered since on. AAA? Mm -hmm. is how many people in anarchist spaces are like, I watch your show. Because it turns out everyone secretly wants to talk about relationships. Like, remember at the party we went to two weeks ago where we formed a posse around our friend and like a bunch of other people got in on that too and, start and found it really funny from different sides of the anarchist scenes because everyone actually secretly is a little like... Yeah, normal. and I wore makeup and, on, and a white shirt in that party and felt like a fucking black sheep. But you got a compliment. 
Like, what I mean is how much well, of it is internal? Person. It's how much of it is internal and how much of it is external. Because I always feel judged, but I don't know if I actually am judged. We are judged, Rowan. We are 100% judged all the time. We are judged for this project. We are judged for the fact that we're wearing makeup. We're judged right now for the setup. We, it, of course we are. And I definitely 100% see how an anarchist faces. If you don't present yourself in a particular aesthetic, you are not seen in, you know, you, you, are, you are kind of looked down upon. But that's like, that again comes back to me asking what which women he's trying to engage with. Because I wouldn't try and engage with someone, um, when, if I'm not feeling confident, like who looks very subcultural, shall we say. I would talk to someone who looks kind of like me. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, I, and that's not a good thing. That is not a good thing. We should be like breaking barriers between the subcultures and stuff. But like, anarchist women are not, you know, a lump. How do you know which women in these spaces are anarchist, which ones aren't? How, like, I, I just, I want to know what your strategies are, if you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I guess we come with this, with huge projections of our own experiences mm. and such. But, so, I sort of, I see your struggle is what I'm saying. But I also, very keen, and please rewatch the shit on lefties only, the, the lefties video, because I think that states very strongly our view that it's actually a lot of the time a lot more exciting to be dating someone who doesn't necessarily already have your political opinions but that's some, someone that you can push and they can introduce you something you know they can introduce something else to you that you don't know about as well and also rewatch our videos on how to like flirt and talk to people in clubs because we were told told off if you, if you like for being quite normative in those videos since we're supposed to be anarchists but it turns out we're two anarchist women and the way in which we like to be hit on or whatever is apparently somewhat normative and not so anarcho as thou. So again, like, yeah, like being more, being less anarchist or not less anarchist, but being what is actually seen as like normal in an anarchist space is actually sometimes more appreciated than being seen as really anarchist in an anarchist space, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Also, I, I wonder, I wonder... If there's a way you can, you know, find your space in 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 those um, kind of, or find your space in those spaces by being, again, who you are, but really, really putting it on a pedestal, you know, taking the piss out of everyone and how like punky they are, and how, how actually it, taking the piss out of how normie you are as well, you know, how different you are. We do that these days. Yeah, like, like oh well. shit, I didn't get the memo about the all black. Whoops. Literally. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, take the mick out of that. I love the time they love hearing that, like, because it just puts mm. them to their place a lot. Of, I don't know. Yeah, and also because there are people who dress with the aesthetic are also aware that they're in costume. Yeah. Like, it's they pretend they're not, but they are. 100%. Like, and the good ones will be self reflective and be able to laugh at that the same way they, you can laugh at yourself for looking normie or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and just, just be funny. Yeah, I mean, I remember like one, one, one of my exes, oh, I don't know how to sort of explain to you who now, whatever. Um, but yeah, he just took it on stride, you know, like it, it, it was like, yeah, like I'm not, the, I'm not all pats and like, mm. you know, piercings or whatnot. And he would just like almost on purpose wear really normie clothes. So he would be annoyed where I'd be like a bit like, you know, I don't know. Maybe crop those shorts or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, fuck it. Like, yeah. let those punks be annoyed. And it's jokes. You know? And you know what? At the end of the day, if you all get arrested, you're going to be the one who's most likely to be able to get away. Really? I mean, I, I no, always No, that person was the, arrested more than anyone yeah, else. I, know, so. I knew which one you meant. But that's also because that person was more confrontational than most, shall we say. So. <laughs> but, like, I've had times when I've read police um, reports of incidents where it describes two very anarcho-looking people in quite detail, and then it says, and a woman. Because there was nothing about me that was memorable to those cops, and I'm still not arrested. <laughs> I hope they're not watching. <laughs> so there's that as well. You can be like, actually, I'm just trying to be undercover, pricks. Yeah. <laughs> it's a political project. Yeah, it's a political look. project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we challenge that, you know, for sure. But again, um, I think as long as you come across as like, you know, empathetic, funny, and understanding how you know how fluid these things are as well you know with these people they change their uniform every couple of years you know they probably used to be like a festival instagram girl that then turned a punk you know for a couple of years to annoy her parents or whatnot and then <laughs> yeah, this was another hypothetical person <laughs> and you know will turn very cute and feminine very soon <laughs> And the one, the one last thing I will say is 
you said that you never dated anarchist women as if anarchist women are a thing you want to try and that slightly rubs me up the wrong way yeah it's a bit fetishistic like right? yeah they're not like a flavor of woman no like no you know maybe we think what it is about anarchist women that you find so appealing yes because there's that whole thing that we also spoken about about like the strong anarchist woman that like boys mm. like just you know what i never went to a java i'm fucking sorry i know like i think that discredits us i don't yeah. think we're attractive we should anymore. have a gun in the background there we go then we, we would be sexy mm. So yeah, also like maybe interrogate what it is about, like what do you actually want in a partner? Because like I can date someone who's read, I can, I really have a beef with Kropotkin, but I can date someone <laughs> who's read Kropotkin or I can date someone that's like a good communicator and I can have like a laugh with, preferably both, I guess. But that's more important to me, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So don't be fetishistic like that. Yeah, like I mean. Yeah. Mm. Maybe that's what I originally was twitchier because no, I I've toned down in my, my anger. <laughs> yeah. I hope you didn't turn it off the second I started having well, a go. Well, I toned down my sympathy, I guess. <laughs> so so we were, we've, we're in our plateau. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, don't lose your, um, don't lose your, I guess, what's the word? Um, enthusiasm? I hope you find the one. But the the one is not necessarily the image that you have in your head, the sort of, like, r- riot girl or whatever, yeah. or like... A lot, uh, tank, tank, tank girl? Tank yeah. girl? Oh. A lot of anarchists don't look like anarchists. Yeah, and or they look like anarchists but that have not. their <laughs> shittiest fucking politics. Yeah, exactly, this is our point. Yeah. So. Well, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question about the next one, Marianne. Let's go. Are we going to read out both versions? Because they do actually offer slightly different information. So this person accidentally submitted their question twice. We think so, anyway. We think. That, well, they're very, very similar, but slightly different. Yeah. I think we should, but they're both... I mean, you'll be reading for, like, two minutes, but... Okay. I think it makes most sense, because they do... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, so um, you swipe that way. Okay. That so we don't all at the same time. Okay. Hello, I'm an anarchist. Well, surprise, surprise. But I grew up in a kind of sexually frustrating religious household. I don't know how much I want to blame that on my impotence in regards to being forward about things. For a while, I wondered if I was gay because I never asked girls out on dates, but I also never found any of my guy friends attractive. I felt like there was not strong desire to build a sexual or any relationship to speak of. Where religion comes in relates to your contradiction of feelings, sex is wrong until marriage, but my father seems anxious for me to date. Still, I have not, and I am 26. On my own, now, but with a job, where does anyone find the time to develop anything remotely personal? I am locked into these old beliefs that expect the purpose of romantic entanglements are on marriage. Sorry? I am locked into these old beliefs that expect the purpose of romantic entanglements in- ah. are on marriage. Okay. Romance should lead to marriage. Yeah. For a long time, I have been suffocated by my parents. Now I'm on my own, and the only thing remotely close to a sexual encounter was an invitation to a woman's apartment after we tore this bar waitress's head off in a bar about the topic of police and their brutality and this led into a few unexpected informal dates or were there dates? None of it was planned, but on the third time we met and stoned out of my mind, she asked if I want to be her boyfriend, friends with benefits or simply a friend. I went frigid. I did not know what to say. In retrospect, I think I was embarrassed telling her I never had sex. I didn't mind the idea but being, uh, but of being in a relationship. It just never came up ever. I didn't mind the idea but of being... Okay. Now... Maybe there are a few questions in that. I don't know what is the biggest problem for me. I struggle with accepting I am asexual, but maybe I am. But how does a relationship even work without sex? I assume no one wants that. It feels strangely alien and lifeless existence. Perhaps it isn't. I don't know. Sorry if it was such a long post. Okay, the next one. Hello from America, ladies. First off, thank you for the show. I've been really enjoying the laid back format and your bubbly personalities. Right then, so I'm writing in about some nasty religious fundamentalism that took over my perspective on the dating world. I'm 25, male. The last one was 26. Which is interesting, right? They're so similar. They're so similar. I guess there are just a lot of people like that. Was raised in a violent draconian Christian household and thus became a sheltered, obedient young man. I always tried to please my narcissistic parents in possibly high standards and tiptoe around their toxic judgments, lest I would be sharply criticized or more. Due to this, I wasn't allowed to develop into my own interest and was brainwashed into a hyper-conservative Christian mindset. This includes celibacy until marriage, to the point where it became a core fixation of my personality. I may in fact suffer from undiagnosed OCD or Asperger's. That could play into this. This has led me to obsessively romanticizing the idea of relationships and questionable loyalty became a foundation of my identity. I also developed a pathetically immature idea that I would marry the first girl I date. 
Anyways, this obsession has taken over my life and I can't seem to let it go, even after recognizing the futility of it. Now that I have grown into agnosticism and leftism, I acknowledge that celibacy is rooted in patriarchy and finding a girl that meets the standard will prove impossible, especially in leftist circles. <laughs> I, also realize, I also realize that there is an unspoken push-pull type ritual inherent to love, but I don't know if I'll ever be able to read into social cues well enough to learn how to play this, in quotation marks, game. This all has led me to being very isolated and develop serious mental illness. I'm finally coming to terms that I need to drop this stupid belief, but it seems really deep-seated. It feels that I would be betraying my old self, and the thought of all the opportunities I, uh, that go is generally making me suicidal. Without trying to sound conceited, let me say I am above average when it comes to looks, so I've had plenty of opportunities to fool around on hookah, but I would turn them all down for some misguided trust that I would find a girl who shares my ideals. I guess I'm just asking for some advice or any words that would help me let go and stop obsessing over this, especially this insecurity of how inexperienced I am, plus a regressive disgust of how promiscuous some people can be. Like, they're either the same person or, like, brothers. You guys should meet. Yeah. 26, um, 25, America. You really think they're different people? They both have a religious thing. They both have an obsession with marriage being the only way of doing it they both think that like promiscuity is bad and also have a vague disgust of hooking up and or sex no i think they are different because one is flirting with asexuality you know and doesn't necessarily so that they say that they had like serious mental health issues etc i guess they said they might be asexual the other one yeah. said they might be aspergers can i have some wine yeah, of course no this is a, this is i feel like wine is appropriate for this as well the sin Yes. Well, drinking was not a sin. Jesus By the way, apologies, but it's us. We are going to be making jokes. Like, I know these are serious themes and like we are fully sympathetic and we're going to get into like the meat and grind of this of, of this question. Uh, but but but, you know, like I don't think you'd be writing us in if you would think that we're just going to like, you know, be super clinical about this as such. Like, you know, we have huge sympathy with you and like, yeah, have so many feelings and like solidarity with all of this. But if we're gonna make like if we if we want to make like blood to wine jokes, we're gonna do them. Like yeah. Alleluia, apologies. Alleluia. Okay, there are two comments I had in the first one. Yeah. And again, sorry if we'll be mixing these two. We understand that again they come from possibly different um, individuals as such, but I mean it's kind of fascinating, and I think it would be if these are literally two separate separate people. Mm. You must know how many of you there mm. are. It's interesting, ever since I've started joining a lot of um, American relationship groups, like the religion aspect, it's just coming across so much more than it has in like my life in the UK, which is really interesting. Of like the religion impacting people's look, look outlook on like sex and relationships. But um, okay, one tiny comment that's nothing to do with the question at all, but um, the fact that it sounds like you and this girl are having a go at a waitress about police brutality doesn't sound that cool to me. Yeah, same. So maybe stop that. Yeah, that's not something to brag about. Don't have a go at people in the service industry, even if it's about a righteous topic. Yeah. Not a good look. Yeah. Um, the second comment was when this girl said, would you like to be my boyfriend, friend with benefits, or just friends? Oh my God, my first date with my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> Where we go back to um, my apartment and he's like, so Rowan, I like you as a friend and we could be friends. I could also like you as more in a friend and we could be more of a friend or we could like each other as comrades and be comrades but I just want you to know which which one to pick and it put me so much on the spot and I completely froze and I was like would you like to come inside so I get you on not being able to answer that very difficult multiple choice question just like <laughs> especially since it's like it feels like then it's solid then like it's not fluid. yeah I don't want to decide yet yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah whether or not you're asexual only you can decide. What I can say is there's loads and loads of really good asexuality um, Facebook groups where you can just join them and read and explore and look at those things. But it sounds like to me that you're not. Uh, yeah, same. I wonder what's your relationship with your own body and touching yourself as such. Because like, Ooh. right? Because I, I find a lot of the time with asexuality, like I suppose like physical pleasure, whatever one would call it is not necessarily part of the game but it doesn't seem like you're someone that doesn't touch yourself however maybe that's the case maybe you feel the guilt even in that and i think mm. fundamentally this is the question well this is the i guess the phrase that kind of ties both of those 
questions together that it is absolutely normal that you would question that in you because for a longest most important period of your life what's been drilled into you is that sexual desire is a sin it's a sin that will punish you where you will burn in hell for eternity that's scary man that's really scary of course you don't want to go anywhere close to that or you feel dirty if you've done anything along those lines and to and to escape that is is incredibly difficult mm -hmm. so kudos that you're even attempting to and it's the sort of thing where i mean our obvious you know answer will be here like jesus christ go explore have fun because really it's just incredible physical pleasure yeah however that's easy for us to say right because we just don't necessarily have at the back of my our, our minds this eternal uh, damnation well on one hand we don't on the other hand as women we do right oh yeah we can relate to the whole like being shamed for having sex part 100 like, percent. Yeah. yeah even t to this day 100 percent. like i mean i feel you know like every time i've been with someone i'm like am i going closer and closer to being a whore what number of partners is is okay you mariam are officially a whore five ten twenty fifty when is it official yeah and whilst we like obviously are like super sex positive and all of those sure. things in our like political life in our like tiny little heads when i have a hookup i pretty much feel disgusted with myself the next day i need to shower Same. regardless Same. of whether he was caring and lovely yeah, yeah, yeah. or a dickhead who left I still have well, to more with wrestle. The I have it with both. Uh, in to some degree, I have it with both. Okay. And I also, to some degree, have it every time I have sex. And also, I, side note, I went through a whole period about um, nine months ago thinking I was asexual. And I, I would sit in the garage, chain smoking in the dark, and Google websites on are you asexual or not. Turns out I was suppressed. And so, like, that's another thing, like, sex drive and libido change a lot to do with mental health. And, like, one of you was saying, like, you have suicidal thoughts. That is something that should be taken seriously and you should yeah. hopefully like seek help for that but also yeah. depression of any kind can completely affect libido do you watch porn like the masturbation was one question do you watch porn do, what kind of porn do you yes. like yeah does it turn you on or are you just doing it because you feel like you ought to do it like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like and um d definitely porn, porn is also a bit of a vortex right like the more uh, not again again we're fairly porn pro and all of that stuff but i mean for porn I don't know, uh, but you know, the more you've seen of it, the more like somewhat desensitized you become mm -hmm. of it. Perhaps a bit you go towards you know more. Yeah, I'm finding it a real problem. Like I can't get off the things that I could get off to two years ago. Well, that's why I've been really into this audio porn thing because it just completely puts you to the position where uh, well, first of all, it's, it's just quite subtle and, and nice and um, just lovely. But it it instead of seeing the imagery straight away you actually have to mm. use your imagination and it's great well, and you can come up with the, whatever partner would be attractive to you you know so it's not necessarily that it will be like these porn people with their bits and that like they're very much they don't necessarily describe the way that you look at all mm. but so you just have images in your head and that has been really and actually has brought my sensitivity up well i was gonna say like i because i used to really love erotica but i and i really when i find good erotica still that gets me off way better than like visual porn because it's because it's using my imagination yeah. but i've had i've had a real hard time finding good erotica the last few if anyone has any erotica they want to um, recommend me please please do either dm me if you're embarrassed or post it in one of our youtube videos but that's really like wide right so what what type what you like i mean harry potter or fucking or <laughs> mm, not a fandom that i don't know if it was a fandom i would have to go with harry potter star wars or good omens um it it's more about i guess yeah it's about the narrative which is really hard but like if you you've seen a lot of me so far if you really like something and you think we'd be friends then like send it my way because literotica is a really hard to navigate website and very dubious standards and also very quick i like build up I was like funny. I was like getting to know the characters a bit, a bit of storyline, you know. This is great. How it's like actually coming back to people and giving us. <laughs> oh, come on, we deserve a reward. <laughs> no, that's but, great. But no, back to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I fully agree. And um, um, I mean, I, I guess I'm just sharing my mm. as a free sent uh, resource that I have found. Revelation very, for real. Oof. Um. Yeah. So so okay. Um. So you've not. One of you have not had sex. Well, again, that. Exactly don't worry about you. it. Yeah. Literally, just, just don't worry about it. It's or, not going to be silk sheets. It's probably not going to be that good. Yeah, just get... Okay. Break the seal. Just get it over with. Because then, like, the more you think about it, the more it, it just snowballs into this huge thing where it's, like, then the biggest thing. 
really it's just not that big of a deal virginity the social construct yeah like according to patriarchal standards most lesbians haven't even have had sex you know what i mean sex is a construct but getting it out of your head the concept of virginity will be really good for you i think yeah and okay so there are ways of doing this like you can you know i for instance if you're gonna try and meet someone on the internet there are two ways you either i think you know say to person straight away that that's something that they're going to be doing and i think maybe for someone that's a turn on then that's great if you're not telling someone that that's what you're looking after i'd say don't just spring it before well i mean you can obviously like oh that's just really subjective and everything can i tell a short story sure i once um went on this date with this dude and it was going really well and then like we were all like lying in his bed and then like i was naked and then he whispered in my ear this is my first time and i froze and I was like, I don't fancy you that much. I wish you hadn't told me. I feel a lot of responsibility right now. I don't want to be your memory. Like, I didn't consent to this. And yet, not to say that being a virgin, not saying it is cons- is not consensual, but basically, I lost deal. all interest in it. Whereas if he hadn't told me, I'd have, like, banged his lights out. And so, not to say you shouldn't tell. Probably my, like, ethical feminist would be like, you should tell. But also, do what's best for you. Do what's best for you, but understand that for the other person, that might also be a lot to take in it feels like a responsibility whereas you know if someone didn't tell me and then he told me after or the next day i wouldn't really care it was the fact that it was like as i was naked about to do it he whispered in my ear and so i like rolled over and pretended to go to sleep on his like single bed in like (sighs) oxford dorms it was not my proudest like (laughs) Thank you so much for sharing this. That's so just when you mentioned that, I was like, that's an anecdote I forgot. <laughs> so yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, but I mean, again, look, that means you're a bit older, yeah, a bit more experienced. You're probably going to skip the early 20s terrible sex, you know? So you, you so as in, you're going to just have great sex, hopefully straight away. So really, yeah. it's just not that big. But it's just so tricky because like, as you can tell, we are just fairly sex positive and what we do just want to welcome you in the club or actually it's just fucking great times. But, but then also there's so not also there's a lot of sex that's crap and and you know, a bit either like you feel bad or you don't feel bad and it was just a bit meh and that's okay too. It's not gonna be this like necessarily this like thing, don't the shy of for, sex. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah, that's what I mean though, I guess. <laughs> like don't expect it to be shit, but don't expect it to be great. Don't expect it all to be the same. But again, there are, I bet there are a lot of support groups that, that also just deal with like Christian uh, guilt, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's just it's, it's just a thing. And also these are conversations we have. For instance, I, oh, I hate the fact that I'm now going to reference Sex in the City. I fucking hate myself. I thought you were going to go for Fleabag for some reason. I mean, I guess that would be the more... The sexy priest. I suppose so. Yeah. But there was this, like, so Miranda was dating, I guess, a Christian man that, like, every time they would hook up, he would straight away run to the shower, you know, to, like, wash the sin off or whatever. And she was like, can't deal with that. And just broke up with them. Although they were getting on for every other, th- like, with every Fair other enough, thing. No! Oh, come on, you're getting on with every, for every yeah, other Yeah, but thing. you can, like, not like a thing and be okay with that. Sure, but also, like, you can work with them with that. What, can you, what if you just have that conversation? Like, well, yeah, like, I run to the shower immediately after sex because I'm super scared of UTIs. Okay. Okay. Because I now can have um, graphic. Now, I can now have spunk inside me ever since I got my IUD. I was like, how do I do that? <laughs> but you know, I'm like super aware of UTI, so I always I don't like, believe it has oh, anything babe. to do with it. I'm a good full shower. I just don't believe it has anything to do with that. Well, anyway, I don't know. Well, I also pee in the shower, so you know. I mean, everyone does. I don't know if everyone does, but it's like a way of me like flushing out all of my holes at once. Oh no, but for me, it's cystitis. Like I, it's yeah. ha- here, like running water is just a thing. I just can't hold it in all of the time. Yeah, but I I don't know. I always heard you should pee pee after shower, sex after. <laughs> Pee shower sex something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I am that person. If someone had a problem with that, I'd be like, you know, I care more about my lack of UTIs than I do about you, babe. Well, I do think it's shitty politics to just like, because someone has that like hang up that clearly comes from a place of, oh, fuck it, trauma, like to just completely not deal with it and be like, that's on you, babes. Like, th- I mean, maybe those people exist. And obviously, if you're not into that, you shouldn't be with but someone. But this is the problem, but, like, right? Where did that line? Since when do we just throw perfect guys away? Like, since when, when did this happen? Like, used to be like, I don't know, like, yeah, you get married, then you go, like, through the yeah, and thin together. It. Like, and you fucking deal with it. Since when is this whole thing of, like, oh, I don't know, he showers after sex, so we're, I'm just gonna, like, not see him well, anymore. it's this weird Bullshit. line on, like, consent or, like, not being in relationships you don't like, which is interesting right now. Because on the one hand, it's like, be there for your partner, deal with this, this, this is what it's expected. On the other hand, it's like, if you don't like one little thing, you're not compatible yeah. and you have every right to break up. 
And I kind of agree with both, but I just feel like that's untenable because everyone has irritating little habits yeah. that you have to deal with. I think it's also easier in London because you probably will just find someone else, but like I guess more in rural places it's a bit trickier. I also think the longer you're with someone, those quibbles will either build up or you'll just get used to them and then you'll eventually miss them when they die. That's what I hear from like old couples. Yeah. Is that like they miss him snoring after now all that? Now I want to very specifically talk about marriage, I think, because there is this one, you know, I think it ties into both of these questions, the idea of the one and that's that. Gosh, I, I hate, to, it's kind of, again, revealing more than one would like to and that sort of stuff. But I've just come back from Russia where I was, uh, you know, for um, three weeks and that's very, very patriarchal society. All of my cousins and their parents, you know, wedded in like early 20s. And I mean, very early 20s, like 21 or are planning to. And sure, they get on. Sure, they have children. Sure, I can see there's companionship. Sure. Sure, I also see that they're, that's, that's just it. And I just don't think it's enough. I don't think, I just, it hurts me to think that people just think that will do. And then they fall into marriages. And for me, the idea right now to be able to like say yes to someone for another 70 years. Oh my God, that's so high, like a hand fang. And of course that gives that a certain sense of security, but it's also super scary. I guess as like an atheist or whatever i i feel like i wouldn't mind getting married because i know i could always divorce but i guess if you if you genuinely think that that's it that is really scary yeah i think it's it's not even well i guess they're muslim any anyway so sort of like uh but it's still the idea of ma marriage is, san is sanctity of marriage I no I is, is divorce normalized I guess it would be, but I think it's more of like a judgment around like the relatives as such so rather than being a religious thing it's more like a um societal mm. thing uh, which is a bit of a shame, but um, don't settle for anyone that is less than perfect and like the idea that you're already fetishizing the someone someone perfect like you're not gonna find that perfect So you're gonna settle for anyone that's just there for you and that's so tragic See, I kind of think the opposite like I think looking for someone perfect is a very harmful thing because like someone does not reveal their perfectness straight away perfectness is also something that grows and like love is something that grows it's not like Love is not a stable thing, right? It ebbs and flows. That's funny. I don't. I don't know. I. I. I, I guess. I I'm really into the idea that. of companionship because I'm a very, very lonely person, and I care more for companionship than I do for passion. But I know that's different to you. Mm, mm. I suppose. I think love fades. I don't necessarily you don't, see it as. You've never had it grow. Mm, companionship grows. That love and desire and like insane just passion yeah doesn't i feel like passion zoop, but like love in terms of like affection and deepness of connection up i don't know no i i mean ideally they both either go up or remain I mean, the again, same i'm but... still very young you know well, yeah, me too. i've only had like this. what not that many long-term relationships how's long counted long term more than a year well that's the thing with all the relatives i'm talking about they were married after like two years and that's I've all of my most of my relationships have been way all like longer than that, so don't really know what that's, that's true. about. You've had longer relationships than most people I know. Yeah, yeah, I'm very, very lucky to, but it's just I don't know. I just think that's the that's fade. But I do, however, believe in meeting like the right person as mm. such. I do too. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's the other way around. But I'm, well, I guess what I'm scared of is waiting my entire life for the perfect person and not ever finding them. But you will. I don't know. I just really think you will. And I don't think someone is necessarily obviously perfect straight away. Like, but they are, even if it's just for a couple of years. No, I but mean, I don't think I would notice time. that they were the perfect person straight away. Like even say the person I had the most strongest feeling for I've ever had. It took me four months before I realized how strong my feelings were. Of knowing them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I mean, like, am I, like expecting to find the perfect person fully formed right there and waiting for you and you meet them and you have a conversation, you're like, they're perfect. I don't think that will happen. I think that will happen, but I think it's absolutely fine to say that there is an expiration date to that. And but I think most of the time that's the case, is that, that like, you just, but then you just end up being married and then it's just like, that's just the thing that's there. Well, yeah, that's, I, I told Mariamis already, but I want to share with you this great tweet I saw the other day, which is, um, 
having kids is raising a <laughs> is running a crash with someone you used to sleep with. And like, not to say that you can't still be in love and have kids. Of course you can. But For like, sure. And obviously, lots of still incredibly in love qua uh, couples mm. that yeah they exist. It's just I think uh, the idea that is pushed down our throats all the time is that that is the usual that's what you should do yeah. that, well, not that, that's even what you should do but that everyone has that of and course if you, you don't get married and then you lose passion and then you raise your kid that's what life is like no but i think it's the other way around. well i mean i think that it, the, the idea that's pushed down our throats is that no actually everyone is in love and happy all the time and the people that are not in those relationships we're the ones that are losing out well that's the desperate housewife mentality right but it turns out they're all actually like secretly like jacking pills and having a terrible life like look yeah. at 1950s housewives how, how happy were they I guess what I'm trying to say, I'm not saying it coherently at all, is that it's absolutely fine to understand that incredible love exists, but it won't last. And because you have that understanding, it's, it's, it's then okay to... Because I don't think pe people should just fall into marriages like that. No. And I, unless I, you think you're going to like... Unless it's like for foreseeable future. Yeah. It's not forever. But I also don't think you shouldn't date until you've found that, I guess is the angle I'm sure. coming from. Yeah. Well, so I think we were no, just slightly like, talking across purposes. Exactly, yeah. I think we were slightly talking across yeah, purposes yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like, I don't want you to hold off from like sleeping around because they're this perfect person. They might be or they're not. Mariam thinks there definitely is. But, that, but she still doesn't think that you should not do anything until you find them. Also, some of the best, you know, I don't know, like, uh, people that I've mo loved the most, I haven't necessarily had the best sex also. with. And, you know, some of the people that I just think are absolute fucking jerks, all my days do they make me... Mm. Come many a time. Yeah. And obviously it's great if those two things come together, but uh, not sex, always. Sex without love can be sick, and love without sex can also be sick. And yeah. sex and love and marriage, if you like. Sure. Also can be great, also cannot be, you know. Yeah. But you can't wait for a thing that may or may not happen at some point and then expect when that thing does happen that it lasts forever because the, all of those things coming together are very unlikely. Well, what is marriage? Anyways, what, you just promise what to a god or to people around you or to the state that you're going to be like with this person all forever? Of them. There's a lot of pressure. I just find it so unreasonable. I, I just, I don't know, I just find it so like... Su but see, I'm such a, like, about un marriage now. Fucking like... What's the word? Um, arcane institution, such an arcane idea. It's like now we know that like a smartphone is better than like a flip phone or whatever. Like it just does more things. So that's what I'm thinking. Like, I don't know, just like partnership and like great sex and adventures. And I know polyamory, if you're into that. And like, I don't know, fetishes. That's so much more fun than like I've met someone, I've had marriage with them. Like one is actually advanced and the other one is just like, mm. it's just so fucking basic. You're going to do dogging in your 50s, which is fine, but... It, it just seems like it, 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 it yeah, it's internet 1.0, okay. oh, you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's mm. just so fucking basic. Yeah. Your penis is a smartphone, not a flip phone. Let it do many things. Go There's so prosper. many different ways to do a relationship and do long-term relationships as well. Do forever relationships, have babies. There are so many different formats. And I know I'm sounding like a fucking hippie now, but like, that's not the case. That I... Uh, she is a hippie. She burns incense. I've seen her. <laughs> Why did you expose me like that? I even have scented candles. I know it's disgusting. Um, but I also play video games. It's fine. My toilet is here. Okay. Last anything uh, more? Sorry, I can't I, work oh, with your phone. It's me neither. It's me. And don't let anyone tell Wait, you. Wait, am I like, about to show the internet that's my passcode? The, that's Ooh. like the end ambition is signing yes. that fucking sheet of paper because two thirds of marriage ends in divorce. Sure, fine, yeah, but like, I mean, again, I hate it, Carrie Bradshaw. She's like, I can't say yes to someone forever if what I mean in my head is for foreseeable future. And I think that's what we all know, that that is for foreseeable future. You turned out on hookups for some misguided trust that you'll find a girl who shares your ideals. Why not do both? Ideals change as well. Yeah, what are your ideals? You haven't really outlined them. You're 25, you're 26, your ideals are going to change. The person that you are right now, you're not going to be like that in 10 years' time. And it's... Ugh, it, you're gonna, you might grow together, but you might go grow really separately, yeah. and then be fucking miserable that you don't fit each other's ideals. And oh. you're married. And you're married. And that now there's a prenup, or maybe God forbid there's not a prenup. And there's 
20 children that are also unhappy and hate your guts. Yeah, just, yeah. It's hard with the whole God thing because I can't relate to that, but I can imagine what it's like basically to have a, I don't know, overbearing parent that judges everything you do and knows everything you do. Well, it's the same with our, like, political milieu, right? Like, I mean, there's so much, again, judgment in the way that you do things. And I've actually yes, seen... but at least when we're, we're dead, they can't judge us anymore. That, 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 that's, that's true. <laughs> but I've also seen, like, some um, radical lefty types. Actually, it's been really interesting. Um, where they were like, I'm going to get married as a rebellious project against the anarchist left. Ooh, can I frame that? Because I really want to get married, but I haven't got really legitimate framing. Fine, okay, talk to I don't to want to get married. I want a wedding. I want like everyone I know to wear a big hat sure, and I want to wear fine. a massive white dress and I want my partner to have a top hat and a bow tie and I want fine. there to be a jazz band. Fine, okay. Will you come to my wedding? Depends who it's with. Does it? Yes. What if I don't approve? It's only a wedding. I'll get divorced the next day. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, okay. <laughs> can I be made of dishonor? <laughs> yes, you can be made of dishonor. <laughs> <laughs> you have to sleep with all the groomsmen. <laughs> Bring some lube. <laughs> it's so funny because, again, we, I, I will repeat something that I think we spoke about maybe in episode one or two where we're, like, projecting this, like, huge image of some sort of, like, I don't know, experience and all this and that. But actually, we lead some of the most conservative sex lives that from a lot of what we know, actually, from a lot of people that we know. Like, we're actually not know. that out there. I don't know. About. How do we know what people's sex lives are like? They mostly seem fraughter than funner more fraught than more fun no 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 correct correct <laughs> um like there's no one whose sex life i envy that we know a couple sex life not love life maybe yeah 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 because yeah. i know there's one or two love lives we might envy but i don't know about sex lives yeah but i mean i give them like five years you know so well this is the thing we're gonna wait to our mid-30s and get all the divorcees all right, should we move on? <laughs> okay. Okay, you read this one? I get quite a decent amount of matches on Tinder, and recently I kind of want to hook up with someone. I've never had a hookup before. How would I know if someone is willing to hook up as well without being creepy? Put it in your Twitter, well, not Twitter, or Twitter bio. Put, put it in, put it in the bio. Tinder bio, like, I'm looking for this. That's okay. Yeah, we've done a lot of episodes on how to do online dating and also how to flirt without being creepy. So I don't feel like we really but want don't to spend say much like, time on this. I want hookups, you know. For instance, what I, what I did for a bit was like looking for a competent gnome that knows how to please. Mm -hmm. That straight away shows what I'm into, you know. Yeah. And also if like someone, the, the person you swipe right with has a big bio full of like interesting facts about themselves and they start trying to have a conversation with you, don't swing it around to sex immediately or you will yeah. just get blocked. Like... Pick I mean, your audience. It's a bit more tr tricky. Wait, uh, do doesn't do say. Yeah, okay. So I, I understand how it would be a bit more trickier for a dude to be like, oh, you know, only out there for... But no, if they put it on their profile, then fine. Yeah. Then I, if, cause like, I've had times on Tinder where I fancy to hook up and I swipe to people that fancy hook up and I said, do you want to get a pint and hook up? And they said, yep, 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 yeah, done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> you like, yeah. Pick, pick the people you match with and don't lead someone on and don't pretend you're not going for a hookup if you are because that's shitty, shitty behaviour. Also, it can be very, very like empathetic and nice. Be like, hey, to put my cards on the table, I, I, I think I would like a sexual encounter. That doesn't mean that it's all just like me getting pleasure. I will like make you come three times yeah. or whatever you know like and so i am very very interested in pleasing you uh um, yeah don't just yeah don't just emphasize your orgasm yeah but and, also, oh my god no everyone does that it's really annoying like the dudes they're just not interested in like pleasing you it's so annoying oh i'm gonna ram you so hard babe oh and okay. then they don't even know how to do that no oh my god also yeah don't sexy talk something you can't do in real life oh my god and also don't do like creepy asterisk role play because i really hate that the what the like you're so hot blushes Oh, that's cute. Oh, it's so fucking. You see, like, you can't win. Amigo. Sorry. <laughs> like it's so like mid noughties like chat room. Oh, you know, I'm from that generation, so like it's well, fine. I uh, <laughs> legally, I'm not. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> damn it, Mary Ham. <laughs> oh God, damn it. But yeah. Yeah, okay, so... Unzips pants. I mean, I don't know. Clutching my massive boner. Like, oh, it's so cringe. And How would I know someone is willing to hook up as well as without being creepy? 
Yeah, just, yeah, just, just ask. Just really emphasize their pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. But not in a creepy way. No. Not like, can also, make you do stuff a while. Yeah, and also like, um, if you want to sleep with uh, cis women, which I'm just going to go with because that's what I am and it's what I can relate to, know your parts of the anatomy. Don't be like, I'm going to like ram through your, th- I've read so many weird oh ones, my God, I'm going to yeah. ram through your cervix or like, I'm going to like, uh, yeah, like, I'm going to like pump your ovaries or something. Oh like, yeah, or like, things that don't make sense. Yeah, like thrust in and out as if yeah. that does anything. <laughs> yeah, know what you're actually talking about and make sure you can do it. But also, like, I I, do, I, do, I have this one friend, bless him, I, he's very nice, but he had on his tw- uh, Tinder bio, great at cunnilingus. And Ew! Yeah, exactly. Ew! Ew! I'm just sort of like... Oh, bless! I know, and like, maybe That straight is. away tells me, no, you're not! Yeah, yeah, I know, and that's a problem. <laughs> oh, But if you were just no. like, here to meet a cool gal, have some fun, wink, wink, not looking for anything serious. Yeah. That's chill i know yeah. what you're up for but you're also like uh, you know i don't know com- competent mm. and pleasuring or whatever you know like I and also yeah sorry no 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 i just yeah but also expect to like at least have be able to hold conversation during like a few points beforehand because you are going to need to do that and also be caring afterwards but like some people might want to just launch straight into bed most people want a, a bit of a chat down the pub first i would say yeah and as always you know pictures are really important so like i, th- I don't mm-hmm. know i think if you have good pictures like you will get assertive ladies at you straight away anyways we offer a service in um tinder bio makeup tutorial where we will help you frame your bio take we, pictures. we need to create this into an actual package but we do offer the service where mm-hmm. for 150 pounds each so 300 pounds because it's a day's work we will take you out we will make a variety of pictures in many different places with many different profiles many different filters and we will come up with the perfect bio for you that fits you that is also guaranteed to get you lots of um swipe rights yeah yes um or left no rights right okay i always do the xv thing do Um, you yeah oh you old man no it's actually quicker I guess there's less movement. <laughs> but I, whenever I do that, I definitely have swiped left on someone. I'm like, no, goodbye. I didn't pay for premium. <laughs> Gone forever. <laughs> um, but yeah. So if you're interested in the full package. Yeah. And also, like, if you're if you just go like, should we move this to WhatsApp? That is already straight away. Uh, uh, like, yeah, we're going to meet sort of thing. Don't spend yeah. too much time on Tinder. No, this is a bit interesting. In like a lot of my groups, they're like, if someone hasn't talked to me for hours first, I wouldn't even agree if they asked me to meet up. Whereas whenever I was Tinder dating, I was like, do you just want to take us down the pub? Because like CBA was like texting. Oh yeah, that's true. So I like, also kind of tried to read the room of the person you're talking to. But and if also- she's not interested, straight away, don't pursue it. Just move on. Tinder is a big kettle of fish. Yeah, but also, oh, it's a pin fat. Like for instance, Someone that I've actually been really, really interested in, but then just like got in the way and I just never got back to them, though they're actually fucking lovely. Yeah, that also happens. It's so annoying. And they were actually absolutely perfect, but I just like, I just, yeah. things changed and I just never got back to them in the end. And so I feel really bad, but they actually were great. So sometimes that will happen and sorry. Yeah, yeah I've ghosted people by accident just from like forgetting and life getting in the way. Don't take it to heart. Don't take Tinder to heart is the most yeah. important thing about Tinder. Do not send dick pics unsolicited. Second most important thing about oh, Tinder. Jesus fucking Christ. Well, unless it's a really unsolicited. Well, not. But I mean, I don't know. I've never asked, but sometimes it's good vibes. No, we're not asked, but like. Oh, to be fair, it's just one particular instance. No one else. But. Like, no one's ever been like, can I see a dick pic, please? Maybe they have. I don't know. Yeah, but, I don't but understand the a, etiquette. Again, it's like, it's like reading the room. Like, yeah. would you, like to see, you can be like, would you like to see a pic of me? And then, yeah. like, depending on whether it's got, like, a wink or an aubergine or a squirt thing. You know, there are ways of doing it. Yes, yes, That yes, are not just sure. sending a dick in the middle of a conversation. I'm assuming you're, like, a cis dude. I'm sorry if that's sorry, not the case. Sorry, sorry. It's just our usual target audience <laughs> yes, or whatever. Yeah. Also, my majority of my Tinder experience. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Okay. Hey, I do want to check that everything's I working quickly. Okay, so we're going to do a little cut, but see you soon. See you in five. Okay. Hi. Hello. Back. back. To okay. break. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Sorry, it's like 11 p.m. at this point, and we're off our faces. Like, also send us money. Okay, so I've been flirting with this guy on Grinder, slid into his DMs, going great. 
We've got a great chat. We see eye to eye on the lefty stuff. He's quite assertive too, which turns me on. Yes. Ghost Subs of the World Unite. Oh, yes. And he's got a very pretty face. However, when we meet for a first date, IRL, I just don't find his physical presence very attractive. Like, there are moments I do, but sometimes I feel like I'm forcing it and feel super uncomfortable with that idea. Uh, like, as if I owe him sex because I flirted with him and I'm trying to make myself be into him. I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking things, but maybe I just need to see if the attraction grows with time. But what advice do you guys have as regards to knowing when psyching yourself up for it is starting to border on self-manipulation, if that makes sense? Cheers anyway, babes, you're both the bomb. Thank you. Thank you. I love that phrase or that that, that that concept. Like, to what extent is psyching yourself up turning into self manipulation? It's so. It's true. such an interesting question that I've asked myself, but not in such well put words a lot. Yeah, but is it, again going back to our conversation about marriage? Don't you think that happens so often within those relationships, oh. right? Where you just like you feel like a sign of, of 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 saying that your relationship is still okay is to have that like on vacation sex or whatever you know though really both of the time both of you are probably thinking of like either porn or some like someone you hooked up with in your early 20s or whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and is that that's that's like borderlines on many men on the law of complicated stuff. but that's the thing if you do it yourself is it non-consensual like to what extent is the other partner meant to read the room and meant to know that you're not into it and to what yeah. extent is it on you to articulate that because like not every time I've had shit sex has been like, you know, like assault or whatever, obviously. Mm. And also I think a lot of people would be appalled to know that I haven't had a good time and I've had sex with them. 100%. percent break their heart. But I think it's also uh, quite naive to think that 100%. I mean, you're super lucky if you are in that situation. And I've been lucky enough to be in relationships where it really was just me and the partner and nothing else. No one else is in the room. But like, sometimes there are. There are and so... What, what are the politics of that, right? Like, yeah. It's Do you think it's bad politics to like fantasize about I think it's unrealistic else? to have it any other way. If, yeah. If you enjoy every other aspect of your life, like. But my, my um, thing that I didn't quite understand with this question was they said on our first date, like, do they mean several first dates or do they mean just one that first way. date? Which is so sweet, as in like you went back for more. That's the thing, but I guess if you have a lot in common with someone, you just can't quite make, but then I just need to be friends. Yeah, so, okay, you can have someone who's, like, sexy and has great politics and you don't want to sleep with, like, that's why we're friends. Like, yeah. we feel that way about each other, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, so, I, again, been on this, like, dating stuff as of late as such, and I guess been uh, lucky enough where real life is just as good, maybe not personality-wise sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> at least uh, goodness-wise, and my god i really i don't think especially if it's just it's grinder right it is for the hookups well obvi obviously it's great if it turns out you know to be something else but uh, if it really is like your intention is just that i wouldn't put myself through the torture of like no not torture but like look i have an idea in my head i'm here to implement this idea if it's the idea is not meeting my expectations to help with this the, the whole pool is much much wider are there like but I guess the problem is not that the sex is bad, right? The problem is that the person doesn't want to have sex with the other person. They just don't find they them, don't find them attractive. Well, well, then, yeah, why bother then? Like, what? But like, it's, I guess it's so awkward, right? Like, that whole, like, hey, sorry. Look, there are a lot of, like, uh, cute little things. Also, for instance, even when I go on a date, I go, like, Rowan, I'm going to this house or, like, to, to this place. So there's security wise. But there is all of this. What is the perfect one that you have with the key? Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you get a friend to call you up saying that they're locked out and you have to come home. Yeah, I'm sorry, you just have to drop everything then, you know? So yeah, there's nothing you can do if your friend is literally waiting on your doorstep without a key. Yeah, 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 even, you know, even if you're not sure if that's gonna happen, you can literally set an alarm to be like one, like half an hour into your uh, meetup, you get a call, you know, and it can, if you're really into that person and the call is quick and great, then you just go back to the mm -hmm. conversation. But if it isn't and you don't have a friend that will actually just call you, you go like, literally oh yeah shit, shit shit fuck i have to go back and you know you can be nice about that stuff and you can still be in touch you know and the life gets in the way and you never meet again so you don't have to like insult and fuck me like don't insult that person by just because you, you don't pity them fuck someone like what i mean yes but i mean as i'm like don't be like yeah i'm not into this because you're not attractive like don't be that mm. but like there are ways of politely saying like staying out of this but yeah to come to to what you just said like 
go definitely like don't put yourself in a position where you're hooking up like meeting someone just for a hookup and then that is bad because like they didn't meet your fantasy no there are situations where you could like fall in love with someone and then the like sex is bad no but it's not about sex it's about attraction and you can't fall in love with someone without attraction it's not well are you saying you can like kind of not find someone attractive but then eventually find someone attractive i don't know if you love someone enough could you find them physically attractive as a result of that i guess you could because like you are attracted to you're pleasing them right so giving them pleasure makes you happy. Right? I mean, I'm selfish enough to say yeah. like that's not enough, but... Yeah, that's the thing, like basically it depends on what you like this person. Like if only you can decide what your boundary is there, but you have no fucking responsibility to sleep with no, someone. No, 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 no. And it's so sweet for you of you to even ask. Like sometimes I'm going like, look, People have this resource now, which is on our coagulions, and they can ask anything they want, and they can ask such, like, cute, kind questions, it's like, would that be, like, a shitty thing to maybe do that to someone? And I'm just like, oh my god, you're so, you're such a pure soul. Yeah. <laughs> like, I wouldn't even think it twice. Obviously, I wouldn't do it in this, in a way that would be shitty to the other person, but oh my god. Well, I mean, to use the example I just used five minutes ago, when I was shitty to the other person, but I feel like it was justified in doing so, I really liked the person, we had a great chat, we had a really good date, went back home, he told me that it was going to be his first time. I felt instantly not attracted to the situation and I rolled over and tried to go to sleep. Wasn't my best act ever, but should I have slept with him even though I felt like instantly unaroused? Fuck no. No. Fuck no. I could have done with it better. I was like 20 at the time and not that great. But yeah, and nobody wants to feel like they're a pity fuck. Yeah, like, and also you don't want to just score points as like, oh, how I hooked up with one more person or whatever. Like, what's in it for you? Yeah, nothing. If you really like everything about this person, apart from the idea of their like bits in your mouth, then be mates. Mm. Wait, again, so kind of you, but um, but I get, but also I wonder what it is like. How I am curious. How did this person manage to do this thing where they're attractive in pictures and then not in real life? I mean, I guess they could have like photoshopped the living fuck out well, of they it. Also said but they're... surely that will happen to them again, sort of. Thing. No, but they said they were good looking in real life. It's they didn't feel like sexual desire towards them. They said like they were good looking, but I just weren't into it. How tragic, right? I guess. Has there ever someone really good looking that I'm not into? Okay, but what? Friends. I wonder if there is a scenario where like, yeah, you kind of fancy someone from their pictures or whatever, you meet up and actually they're a bit dweeby, they're not that assertive, you know, they're kind of like yeah, not that, that great. language you're not into. However, and then maybe if you get down to like the business and they'd be like, unleash this fucking lion mm. or something, you know, oh, that yeah. is a possibility. Like, or we'll the other way around where they're like, oh, fucking macho and great, like yeah. well, during the dates and then you get to bed. And they're like, oh. Well, I'm also thinking of a encounter one of us had a while ago when the person was really great really good politics really great chat really funny really cute and then when it came down to the dating part they were instantly not attractive i wonder really uh, I, I, is I, there I, any way not really um but like everything was killer up until the like romance part and that was a uh, killer in the like <laughs> sexual <laughs> sense Oh, I'm so curious oh, now. I don't know how to, like... Okay, okay. Yeah, I can't, I can't be wrong. See, this is why... Because usually we would have these chats anyways, and it's yeah. really frustrating for, for really once we have watching, to actually, like, yeah. police our, our language and that. Yeah. Not police. So but. there is also that tragedy, which is... Yeah, people can be really sexy and charismatic in one situation, and the second you put them in another situation, not sexy and not charismatic. But again, goes the other way. Like, goes the other way. Like, I know, I've been in dates where I've been, like, my best, my, like... The sexiest and the sex was great and I thought I was like on top of the world, you know, and I leave that flat I'm like fucking delivered it, you know, great, you know It was just like the best and you just be on top of the world and you're like Surely they're gonna want to repeat And they don't it's happened don't. only twice. Thank fuck, but um and they don't. It's just like, what, 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 what? But that's what the thing. <laughs> so again, so as yeah. in like, we are coming, I'm sorry, so but like, as in like, we're this like point of authority or whatever, and we're just like saying how shitty it is, like, for the other person and or like how sad or whatever, but we have been in that situation and yeah. we got to that point and uh, no, I thought I, I thought I was on my top game and turns out, I mean, maybe it was just point scoring for them. But. Well, this is like my old adage from like one of our 
God, it was one of our ones we did ages ago. Someone said, what's the biggest lesson you've learned? And I said, you can't make someone fall in love with you. You can be your top self, you can be sexy and you can be charming and you can be funny and you can be hot and you can be all the good things, you can be even great in bed and if someone's not into it, they're not into it. And yeah. that happened to me and I dealt and I still feel like they were wrong and I was right and I'm much better than my current partner, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but like, trying to get over that, if, I don't know, if we're now talking to the person that you're rejecting. No, but, but it's... You know, they will they will be able to handle it. Yes, I guess well, in the way we want to reassure you that whatever, if you feel like you're doing something wrong here, that that's not the case and they will get over it. Obviously, don't be a dick. But really, realistically, going yeah. back to your point, don't pity fuck anyone. Like, that's just, that's wrong and dark. And, and I, mean, I don't think that we feel like that's been done to us, but... Oh, if you're a good pity fuck, hopefully you wouldn't let me know. Yeah. Maybe we have been pity fucked and we just never knew. I guess I always think like if they make me come then it's not a pity fuck, which is so sad because it's like it's so sad because like the base is so low. Mm. But that oh man. Yeah. But then again Like if you really this goes back to what I just said like a minute ago and I was repeat myself because I'm thinking about it again. But like if you really like someone seeing them super happy and joyful to have sex with you is also like a turn on, even if them, I don't know, if, like their naked flesh. No, no, ugh, no. If I'm not into someone, it's just bleh, yeah. Bleh, yeah. It has to be about you at the end of the day. Like, you don't owe this person anything. You have to do what makes you feel comfortable. If you feel happier pissy fucking them, then I guess go yeah, for it. Yeah, sure. But if you were happier not sleeping with them, you have no duty to sleep with someone just because you had great bands. Like, I have great bands with many people. I guess in the way that it sounds, they're like thinking like they tick all these other boxes. And perhaps, you know, because again, we're a bit spoiled here, we're in London, there's just so much fresh meat that's such. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm good. Like, I am, you are, like, we are having very different London experiences, shall I say. <laughs> it's, 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 oh, uh, but um, I imagine if you're somewhere where the pool is smaller, you know, and you feel like every other box is thick, then yeah, I just. I have to try really hard to make and but surely maybe I'll get over it. Like, what is this? It's fine. Maybe it's a me issue. Like, I I understand why someone would be in that dilemma. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I also like say like for example, the first time I slept with a woman, a cis woman, like I had this huge fear that I would be like repulsed by like a vagina, mm. not a labia, if we're going to be grammatical. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the first time I like saw it, I was like taken aback and be like, "Oh fuck, this thing that I've never seen in my face before! What am I <laughs> doing? Oh my god!" And then you know, I like stuck my face in, and it was sick. But it was sick because like she was like squirming around and like having a great time, and it was like a really great event. So there is also a way of like getting an over, over an initial like repulsion if the repulsion is like a fear or an apprehension that comes across like a repulsion but isn't actually a repulsion. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now let's be really. Oh God. Now I'm gonna. Oh, too much wine. Fuck it. What if? What if? <laughs> All right. Hear me out. Hear me out, guys. Hear me out. <laughs> oh God. Well, again, we're supposed. Oh god, I cannot believe I'm gonna be saying this. Okay, again, don't put yourself through this situation, but I'm saying, what if there is a reward at the end where, like, the bits are awesome or something? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, someone could also have, like, the most, like, sassy, banter, killer body, like, and, and, like... Terrible cock. And just, like, like, bad bits. And that doesn't mean, like, you know, it's, don't, don't matter, like, whether it's, it's shape or size subjective. or whatever. It's completely subjective. But, like, bits not to your taste. Mm. <laughs> 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 and, <laughs> Sorry, I'm such a child, I found that so funny. Uh, and, and what happens then? So you just saw them, what, you know, you're gonna force yourself to get into that, but you're already there? I would. Eric wants this inside me. But I mean, I bet it goes the other way around, like where, like perhaps you know you're not in, into that person that much, like IRL. But then, who knows? Perhaps there's a surprise at the end of it all, where it's just <laughs> yeah. But you, you are actually more into the like aesthetics of sex organs than I am. I've noticed because you like will often like compliment a another person's sex organ, oh, and I think you have a more appreciation of the beauty. You know, Mariam's an art graduate. You have to understand. I'm a history graduate, so I'm more interested in the history of the bits. Sure, but the, no, but look, but the art, the arty bit is surely David, which is, you know, just... David? David sculpture, right? Oh, my character is David. 
Well, yeah, yeah. What the fuck is David? <laughs> Which one was he? The way that it looks flaccid is very different from the way that yeah, it looks Yeah, maybe like, it like fucking whoop ooh, I'll like, drink to that. Alright, okay, so, um, um... I don't know if we've been helpful at all. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we're saying there are many, many, many yeah. uh, steps to arrival of a... But then what if they do amazing things with whatever they have? Oh. Okay, but should you have to break past and not desire to have sex with someone in order to have something amazing happen? I mean, that's what happened in the porn I watched, but that's not very good ethical porn. Wait, can you repeat that? Having to break past a barrier of, like, repulsion in order to have amazing things happen? I don't feel like that's good ethics. No. Even though it can happen, hedging your bets on that happening it seems an unlikely bet. Yeah, I mean, again, you're on a dating app, the pools are fucking wide and mm. huge, just, just, just swipe, like, not swipe, but like, just politely become friends. Alright, next. Yeah, yeah. I think A team should be our theme song at some point. Because we are a triple A team. We are A team. I feel like we're gonna get copyrighted now. You didn't do the whole thing. No. I think we're allowed like a song. But now the alt-right will somehow find a way to block us now, so that's good. Right. Oh, no, they would have done that for the last video if they were going to do it. The one where we're like, you should just get the beep, 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 oh, the beep, yeah, the fucking beep, that was beep. beep. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See? Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Hello. I am 26 years old and I'm a trans feminine person on cross-sex hormones. For quite a long time, I've been struggling with intense depression around dating. I often find myself feeling very lonely. But any time someone shows interest in me and tries to get close, I get scared and try to push them away. I've been in only one relationship before with a woman. Only one relationship before with a woman. And she had to have a lot of determination to get through my barriers because she was the one who made all the moves and I had to be the one to fall for her. She was also very accepting of the fact that I'm transgender and got discussions going about embracing the idea of us identifying as a lesbian couple. And she often called me very beautiful. She made me very happy. Near the end of our relationship, I cut off contact with her because I felt she deserved better than me. I know that was wrong and my insecurity is a terrible excuse, I never want to do that again. And when she managed to get back in touch with me, I told her we needed to break up because I hurt her. She told me that she hopes I can be happy as a person I am and I never heard from her again. I feel like I'm incapable of giving and receiving love and like I don't deserve to be loved in the first place, but I don't want to spend the rest of my life alone. Part of it is that I still can't move on. I still struggle to let go of my few remaining insecurities of being trans and can't let go of my remorse. Is there any way that I can cope with being alone or more, or open up more with others? I'm crying right now, I'm sorry. That's in the text. So the, there are a couple of ways of, of tackling this, right? Because, I mean, on one hand, you know, um, of course we, you know, uh, more than happy to try and uh, and tackle your insecurities around I suppose transitioning however as you may understand as two cis women would like for you if at all possible to really get in touch with supportive groups of people that are going through the experience that you are and in the optimistic awesome way it's 2019 there are plenty of those uh, resources out there way more than there had been like five or ten years ago so that's awesome on the sort of second part, and I'm sure we'll go into both of them as such, is that like, if we just want to get down to like, you're an awesome, you know, lady that's into ladies, and we talk about, you know, your insecurity issues, that that we can more than happy to sort of oh, tackle yeah. that as well. But basically, there are there 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 are ones that 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 there are basically kind of somewhat two issues here, and with one of them will be more like helpful than with the other as such. Yeah, with the first one about um, the whole like, insecurity around transitioning, the best I can do, unfortunately, is to recommend this um, fantastic Facebook group I'm part of, which I've recommended in previous shows, called Sounds Like You Need to Be um, Educated on trans Transgender Individuals But Okay, which is a great um, trans discussion group that I'm there, I, I just observe, I don't engage as a cis person, but I've learned so much there, and a lot of people talk about their experiences and often like DM each other, so and from there, you could find leads to other groups which you can talk about this kind of thing. 
and people talk about everything there from like dysmorphia to dating to like fears around like uh, telling someone you're trans Absolutely. all of the things um because yeah i don't feel like it's yeah our place to uh, basically i can't i can't i can't relate to that like and yeah we, and I, I think it would be flipping shady if we attempted to right yeah. i mean we have like for full sympathy and we will definitely will try and attempt to tackle some of mm -hmm. these things now in our answer however i mean again you've seen us you probably you know you know our limitations so that's what we'll definitely go you know we'll yeah. try and tackle this question but just sort of say i don't know i'm kind of really optimistic in this because as i say there are just like lots of documentation of people going through exact issues that you're going through and even to think about this like one particular relationship that you're describing where like it seems to me like the biggest problem that there was with it was um your insecurity around your uh tran transitioning and your almost overt appreciation of any person that would be like dealing with that yeah. and you're just basically so thankful to like the one person that like took you on or something which just sounds wrong and and but again the, i don't know there's just more and more people that are willing to, to whatever deal with that i mean i don't i don't think it should be even anything to deal with as such you like either love someone or not but i'm sorry i'm coming again from a privileged position where i just see optimism in this whereas you're dealing with this like grind grind day to day but something to be said about conversations that were never even being had five or ten years ago and right now you're in the crux of it but soon enough in five or ten years time it's not even gonna be like an issue as such people will just people would have like probably met other trans other trans people have been in relationships with other trans people have told their friends about how things are have watched videos like this videos made by even more like people that are even more um i guess in touch with 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 this and so of course, I mean, oh, she's been cancelled a little bit, but yeah. not by now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as in, tomorrow will be better. I mean, I'm sorry, it's a kind of a shitty um, comparison that will happen. But like right now, like I'm kind of involved, I guess, in trade unionism and the games industry and that, and like so many people are suffering in that, and so many dates there of their issues are aired in like a very, very painful way. But what you always have to think in mind is like two years ago we didn't have those uh, resources in five or ten years time these are not even going to be conversations that are even had so it's going to be the status quo where like video games workers just have rights you know so so though you're in the midst of this it's not going to be like this forever it's only going to get better people us cis people are only getting get, getting educated and are learning our own behaviors more and more and I, I'm, if anything i'm sorry that it's at the historical plight of 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 of, of you, um, but yeah, and I guess fundamentally, like yeah, again, what we talked about, I guess Christianity, and you're always feeling, you know, being fed that what you are, what you've been, where what you're into is like a sin or guilt, that you also feel like you know I've always been told that I'm I'm, I'm this gender, but actually. I'm, I'm not, but now I'm making it fat for other people to see me as how I really am. Of course, there's like terrible, I know, ingrained guilt in that, and I don't know, just get a bit more arrogance in you. <laughs> you seem to be extremely articulate and awesome and self reflective person. If anything, sometimes, sorry, I'll finish my rant quickly, but um, sometimes we I recognize those questions where. We know that our answer will actually mean less than you even writing down the question. And it seems to me like even if you sent this question to the person perhaps that you've had this relationship with, to be like, hey, this happened, I've just sent this in, perhaps this tells more than I was ever able to tell you. And in a way that seems to me the case where you're writing this down and it kind of in a way answers your own question. Yeah, I have a sense too that I don't feel like you expect us to bring anything new to the table per se in your analysis of this because analysis seems pretty down pat like you acknowledge that you in a way self-sabotaged your own relationship because it sounds like you had someone stellar like i'm sure there are other issues whatever but like you acknowledge already yourself the kind of thing that we would say which is that like maybe it was your own personal issues that were getting in the way of your ability to trust building trust mechanisms is something we could talk about also something that I don't know if you're saying a therapist or not, but if you have access to would be a really useful thing because trust in yourself and trust in other people because it's so hard 
it's kind of in a way links to the pity fuck thing but it's so hard feeling like the person you're with is with you out of some kind of obligation out of out of just love and it's really hard when you find yourself unable to trust your partner that's heartbreaking especially when you know it's coming from you and not from them and that's an incredibly incredibly painful and tricky thing oh, to yeah. get out of like i had that in a much less extent last Same. summer when i was aware that i was the the drain and she was the there 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 and i was using that shamelessly but also so aware that our dynamic was basically one where she was making me feel less shit about the fact that i felt like shit and like yeah i had a similar experience with you with, i mean again way left like way more society ex acceptable and easier to deal with but like to do with class as such where i was seeing and madly in love with someone that was just like posher than me and I could never get rid of that insecurity and I was resentful and they were perfectly nice and lovely to me and were ready to spend the rest of their life with me but I was just like you know I, I can't do it I can't be as together as you and your parents and all of this I just it's gross and I kind of in the end self-sabotaged it probably will probably regret it for the rest of my life whatever but do I have regrets over the end of it no I don't because I don't think at the time I was capable or able to bridge that gap in any yeah. shape or form like this wouldn't have happened and again I think it was that down to that person to eventually somehow make well I mean they kind of did they kind of pushed it a bit too far in a sense but um to make me feel more secure but um but but the, at the end of the day you know every relationship is an experience where you learn from uh which you learn from and and um this probably couldn't have ended in any other way from from the period that you're in right now. I mean, you're also transitioning right now. That's not forever. At some point, you will be at the other end of it. And you'll be like a, you yeah. know, the sassy fucking lady that you already are. Well, like, hormones are a bitch. They give yourself a break on that front. Like, um, the other thing I would say about the prior relationship is the fact that you are already able to acknowledge that in a way, it, like, you kind of messed it up through your own insecurities means that you have already said to yourself, like, well, you're like, I'm gonna be alone forever, but you've already acknowledged to yourself, someone wanted to be with me. They wanted to be with me as I am. They loved me. I pushed them away because of my own issues, which is understandable. But your fear that no one will ever love you is unfounded because the Bullshit. proof is in the packet. Yeah. You had this person and you will have this person again. And not being like, you had this person, you blew it. No, I'm saying, your worry that you'll never find anyone who accepts you is already disproven by your own yeah. experiences. So that's an amazing Absolutely. thing to remember yeah. when you're feeling down. Remember that, wait, no, even in the height of my insecurities and like self-doubt, there was someone that really loved me. I am capable of being loved. And this is the height of the insecurities. I don't, I like, I, I don't think it will get worse. It will only get better as you settle in in your own new body, as in as you settle in in the way that other perceive, other people yeah. perceive you. As society settles in. hundred percent. Yes. Yes. Um, it will just get, it will get better and it will get easier. And, um, and again, yeah, the society is changing. Yeah. And I mean, what I'm, I guess what we're trying to say is that the darkest period is now. I want to just tackle the act, the specific questions um, she asked at the back, which are, is there any way I can cope with being alone or open up more with others? Coping being alone is an art form. And it's fucking hard, especially with winter coming and I get depressed in winter, so I feel you there. Friends is the number one thing I cannot stress enough. And when I want to be by myself and just chain smoke myself to death in the garage, having Mariam come in once every two hours for a fag is one well, of the things that keeps me alive. Drag you to Clapton games. <laughs> or dragging me to Clapton games. Like, doing things when you don't feel like being social makes you feel so much better. Because you can fall into that vortex again where it's Easily. much more difficult to, to get out of. And I've been there. Yeah, and hobbies are also really, really important. Yeah. You know, find what you're, you know, excel at or whatever you're interested in and just find community yeah. around that. Online friends as well. I know it's yeah. like not cool, but like I spend most of my life on Facebook right now and I've learned so much. <laughs> like, and you chat with people and people around the world are experiencing the same things as you or different things that make you see things in a different way. Like, just don't be alone in the sense of like even if you're in your bedroom on facebook on your phone that counts like yeah definitely if you're even just talking to people across the world yeah. or whatever that's yeah so there's a lot and there is lonely right that's absolutely yeah. fine to be alone not to say that we don't always need to also invest in that as well i mean i know fuck me like i know ben and polyamorous relationships i had lots of friends and lots of social capital was i still incredibly alone yes mm -hmm. 
and lonely or whatever and it's just yeah. you'll never not have lonely times like yeah. today you I'm can really be surrounded by yeah by every, but yeah you know, today I'm really proud of myself because I've spent a few days uh, by myself recently and felt really uh, bummed out and depressed and not happy and today was the one day where I felt really good about being home alone I did the gardening I did the laundry I went and did some shopping and doing those like household tasks that I put off because I'm like I'm depressed I, I owe it to myself to watch TV all day that feels so much worse, and, and I know this, and yet I still find it really hard to actually do this. And I've done this this one day in a blue moon, and I feel top of the world because I managed to spend a day at home by myself. I polished my fucking boots. Wow. Yeah, right? Yeah, that, wow, wow. And I also managed to watch an entire season of Dairy Girls. So, like, yeah, I managed to do the, like, moping around watching TV and the household task, and it felt really good. So, like, also, yeah, investing in yourself, and I know that sounds really preachy, but I know it for myself. It's so easy to sink into yourself and do nothing and be super fucking blue but you've got this yeah like you, you clearly do people are gravitated towards you it just it's down to you to find that self-love and yeah. i think eventually you will i understand where you would right now where like you know the way that you know your your mind doesn't fit with your body and 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 but it will eventually and and i don't know i think bright times ahead mm. And with regards to like how to open up with others, don't try all others. Don't even try an other on the first date or two in terms of opening up to yourself because like a lot of dickheads around. A lot of dickheads around. You have to build trust and it's a slow thing, but once you have one or two or yeah, even fucking one person that you can open up about yourself with, it feels huge. Even if it's not someone you're dating. Because the, the more you're able to talk about yourself and your emotions, the more normalised it seems and less taboo it feels. Yeah, and like, like I realise other people also feel that way, even like yeah. the ones that pretend to be cool or whatever. This is the thing, like, I have maybe like three, no, maybe four, no, five, okay, it's building up, it's been lovely, I've been in London for a year now. Um, uh, it's literally exactly a year since I flew to London to see the house after my graduation. When I was here for a week and you came to visit me and we looked at the garden and we saw the squirrel and we Stop named her way. Emma. <laughs> The dickhead. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it took me a while, but I have, yeah, I have maybe five friends now after a year that I can open up with. And the more people you say open and honest stuff, the more people relate back to you and the more it builds and you become used to it and you don't become scared. I know it's, I'm talking com completely from a cis perspective. I and completely understand opening up about trans stuff is a much scarier thing because there's also like, hello, there's risk of death in a way that is just not understandable to us. But that's why I do unfortunately recommend taking it slow with building up the opening of trust, but when you do it, it's so rewarding. Yeah. Yeah, talk about those insecurities and all that, but I think we are creating bit by bit spaces where people are able to. And I think this is a huge first step, but you even just writing yes. in. Thank you. And yeah, thank you so much and good luck. And remember, you are so lovable. Like, yeah. you clearly were already. And you will be again because, yeah, people are into cool people and you seem pretty fucking cool. So keep at it. <laughs> oh my god, there's such beautiful questions. I, I can't believe it. Like, oh. and so, yeah, to think people, oh, I don't know. I Trust us like that? That's fucking crazy. Oh, fucking <laughs> crazy. But beautiful. And, oh, I don't know. Okay. Wow, well, we in terms of the numbers and all that. We've got two left, so... No, the task one? <laughs> oh, sure. So! Let's... <laughs> no, it does actually begin like that. Let's talk about stupid social conventions. Let's! Let's talk about social conventions, baby. Look, you try about... It's real <laughs> <clean. laughs> <laughs> Alright. You know, when we're, when we're like high budget, we can have different intro songs for each question. Anyone wants to be a videographer for free, but you get to see this sassiness in real life? Because you can tell this is not, mm, this is not the highest production values. Hey, we have mics and we have a fancy light. Yes. Yes. We're from, from a year ago. We're doing pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. I have started a thing with a girl with which we have certain common social circles. I have had a relationship with one of her closest friends for like seven years. So oh, wait, close -ish okay. or close -ish? So what I was saying, like close-ish. But like I have had a relationship with one of her closest friends for so I'm assuming they're broken up now. Oh they were together for seven years, but now they're broken up. Okay. And she has concerns that should any of her social environment will find out, there will be a black backlash against her. So can you please explain? 
are these sort of informal taboos on dating relationships within the friend, uh, e.g. dating a former partner of your friend's circles, that common? And why do they exist? Boy. You want to stop? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Um, so it really depends whether your social circle or not is like mature or not. That's what right? I was going to say. Yeah, because I mean, if there are people that are just like desperate to gossip about other people and are just, you know, like bored or whatever, of course they will find a reason yeah. to. And I'd like to think that these are the sort of toxic people you are not hanging around with. Well, precisely. Do they care about your happiness or do they not? Yeah. Um, informal yeah so these taboos are very very common so I kind of see it both two ways as in like obviously within like the leftist and our community definitely everyone talks about everyone everyone it's just fucking everyone's with everyone as well. it's so incestuous it's crazy but anyways yes so that's definitely a thing but I also think of like you know the sort of like children housewives the kind of like you know this not even suburban but like you know the the wives of like the upper class people sort of like you hear sometimes of the inner circle of like Kate Middleton and all of that. Oh wait, what's the one that you use? It? The one Sloan. Sloan. And that is where we see from Mario. From Sloan Square in Kensington. Very posh. Oh. But uh whether you also uh well it's also like, you know, they're rich enough mm -hmm. to just like there's enough well, to be fair, anarchos often. And even they'll like shag on the like grand piano or they'll shag in the like squat toilet. Don't do that. I don't. I don't. I don't think I've ever done that. No, 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 done that. Never done that. Like I know I pretend to be all like really, really punk, but actually, like that. Like no, that will. You that know my grossest like thing it. that I ever did. It wasn't like it's not a sex thing, but it's like the darkest thing I ever did. So then, um, Berlin, the very cool, uh, Greek party place. The Greek uh, Berlin party place. Why is it like Greek? Because Greek is where cool things happen. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and I was in the toilet. And I realized I had gum in my hair. And I was in the toilet of this like this like famously skanky nightclub in Berlin. And I found this gum in my hair. And so I picked a bit of glass off the toilet floor to cut this gum out my Lynch. hair. And I cut my finger mm -hmm. on this toilet floor glass. And so I went to the bar and got a, a vodka shot and spent the whole night with my finger. Oh. So don't do that. Don't be that guy. That's that. What's the question? <laughs> So I like, so like, don't wanna, like, I can't necessarily reassure you, they're like, oh, nobody cares. Actually, it's just about your happiness and your friends will like, no, people will be down like for crazy. Oh God, no, prepare, prepare, yeah. prepare. There's probably gonna be, everyone's gonna be at you. So sorry, we can't necessarily give a, um, a reassuring quote. Uh, They'll be friends to your face, probably. <laughs> However, I've been lucky enough to have been, to kind of gotten away with that as such, where um, been in a very, very loving long-term relationship with someone that I hugely respect and um, happens to be that after things don't work out with us, someone very close to them became very close to me after a while. And yes, there was tension at first, very, very thin tension. But you know, then we just had adult conversations. And really what I mean by adult conversations is literally meeting up two on two. All three of us had two on two conversations about this. Um, tricky, intense conversations uh, in parks um, where we were able to establish um, the sequence of events and the fact that no one's to do with anyone as such and understanding boundaries and what's okay to do and not okay to do going forward and those adult conversations are also very much possible and obviously you you know i suppose depends uh, on the relationship with the ex right yeah well that but also it depends on whether the ex i guess is like mature enough to yeah, also understand that you know whether what are the other people gonna think about it right but this is the thing like in your situation great. none of the fucking social scenario played a part it was just between the three of you and like respecting an ex's right to feel awkward about you dating one of their friends is a legitimate thing and you should definitely do that yes yes you and need to take that into consideration whereas like the broader friendship group are gonna be honestly if they're a friendship group they shouldn't be they should understand the agreement between you the partner and the ex and accept that they shouldn't be taking sides and being bitchy or whatever the fuck you're saying but i can see for instance like i i have so much love and respect for the way like that 
the ex dealt with it in a sense of like they refused to care about what people around us will think about this yeah, sort of change of events and such because they knew hopefully in their hearts that the, the the sequencing was very few separate as such that it and 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 the, uh, one had nothing yeah, to do with the other cheating thing. no right. no and that um was not like getting back at someone sort of thing you mm -hmm. know um but like people will want to be drama -ing. But the coolest thing is if you and like the former partner and the current partner can be like, yeah, there's no drama. What are you doing? And you shame yeah. them for trying to create a situation out of what is not yeah, a situation. Yeah, that's so fucking sad if anyone does yeah. that. Like that's the most pathetic thing that anyone yeah. can do. Can be so like involved in other people's lives because they're probably their own life is so fucking pathetic mm -hmm. that they decide to create drama about other people's lives. Like fuck them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really not to do with anyone else. And if they're being assholes, they're assholes. Yeah, they might actually just be assholes. Mm. Like friends, or friends, or friends, or friends. Like get rid of them. Basically, you're in the wrong circles if they're treating it like that. Yeah. So I guess the answer to this is like, yes, drama will probably occur. Occur like it just does. It's really down to like the the current partners and the ex partners yeah. to have mature conversations about this, and hopefully they can root out the dickheads that are creating the, yeah. the upheaval around this. Yeah, the only person that has a right to feel weird about it is the ex-partner. They don't have a right to like veto, but they have a right to feel weird. They just do. Yeah. 100%. And that is the only person who you should try and be like legitimately decent to and make them feel as comfortable as possible yes. whilst making it clear that this situation is not going to go away, but you want them to be as comfortable as possible with it existing. Yeah, and also really look at their signals as to what they're okay with or not. Yeah. You know, even if they say, you know, like, give me time if it's okay, um, you know, these are my friends for a while, you know, hopefully you'll mesh at some point, but like, let me keep those, yeah. you know? Or like, don't be cuddly in front of me, like, yeah. you know, basic decency stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's down to them to establish those, yeah. um, I guess, But boundaries. for you to listen to those boundaries and respect them, unless they're unreasonable, like, don't even look at her when we're in the same room or something. You know? yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. The other thing I would say is, um, regarding it being a social convention, I think it's only a social convention in, time, in terms of time, like, if I broke up with Mariam and immediately slept with Mariam's best friend, that would be kind of bad form. If I broke up with Mariam and then six months later sleep with Mariam's best friend and talk to Mariam about it, like, you know, the conventions I think, maybe there are societal conventions that we're not aware of because we're like, you know, cool liberated and archivists, but... I just remembered another instance. Oh my god. <sighs> oh, one of my closest friends, uh, Decided to, fuck it, fuck it. Decided to like have a huge crush on one of my, one of my exes, and then decided and because but my ex wasn't like that into them, and then one of my closest friends decided that I actually made my ex not mm. to be into them, and then never spoke to me, nothing like that went to a completely different social circle that was kind of part of my social circle and turned a lot of them kind of against me as that's like i don't know what i think they wanted to but that's why like, including the this like fucking vital. bitch and that hurt me yeah. i have never spoken to that person again it still hurts and yeah. yeah so that's the wrong way of doing that you have to like you know, you take the oh my part God, out why did you do that? If you're watching this right now, I miss you. Why did you do that? That was so fucking dumb. That really hurt me, by the way. This has been years ago now, but that really fucking hurt me. So, mm -hmm. I would have been nice. I would have fucking got it. Yeah. Ugh. Just communicate with all the people that might be hurt. That's the only way of dealing with it. There was nothing wrong with falling with someone else in your friend circle. It happens. Yes. Your friend for a reason. But there is something wrong with not taking people's feelings into account and being having a bit of leeway about how they might deal with it. Like that's it. So yeah, I guess I get. I guess I've been on both sides of this. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking. I was kind of also like a while ago the middle person in that, and not friendship sense, but in the like say work sense of like not leaving enough time and not communicating properly. Gotcha. Yeah. So like I also made the mistake of not communicating pro properly, and it turned out. Not that badly, actually, because the fact people involved were very fucking nice. But that it could have been like, I was a massive dick and should have communicated way better what was going on. So, you know. We all fuck up, but like, don't... If, like, to the best of your ability, try and make the... All the people that could potentially be hurt feel... Just like they're taken chats. care of. Yeah. And I know talking to your ex about a new partner is super fucking awkward. 
but it's also way better than hearing about it from someone else and way better than them spreading like some kind of gossip streak or whatever and if your friends are like being weird and petty then they're not good friends yeah to be yeah i mean i'm fine i'm got like it's fine to have like some friend like you know like your ex is like okay these friends are my friends and it's like you know, whatever that happens but yeah it's not fine to spread rumours and gossip stuff and fuck social conventions like the social convention is be kind to people and if they're not fulfilling that then they're not fulfilling social fucking conventions what I find really fascinating oh it happened is it that happened. A, is that a special oh, color? that's your phone by the way I mean I'll deal with it it happened wine got spilled it happened ah! that's what we can say all that matters is how you deal with it uh I found this in a squat so I'm like fine with it Okay. Wait, was a, it wasn't a squat. We open it. Was a house. It's a very nice color. It. Yeah, yeah. I should probably take care of this at some point. We'll put salt on it. Yeah. Do, uh, you know where I spill loads of wine under your chair? Well, you did it straight away. That's yeah, but I I it's like actually like just. Have you felt the ground there? No. Because you don't smoke at the window, but um, it's like crispy with like dried salt. It's super gross. Do so you think I need to go with this now? Do you have water? Yes. Put some water on it. Okay. Okay. You see, it's just like, it's not classy, you see what's happening. I mean, it is classy. We have oh. wine and pillows. You see my incense drawer? Well, um, said, I said water. No, I'll get that as well, but I'm doing it for the hands. Oh. Um, maybe a little bit for this. But uh, also, um... Uh, what, the last thing that I was going to say... Good times. Um, it's actually coming up real good. Okay. But is it on the wet wipe now? Yeah, it is. It, was, it got pink and then it got wet again because of the water. Okay. I think it was on a lot. No, it was fine. Timer. It'll be like a tiny uh, darker oh, patch. But it's actually, it's, that's actually fine. No, actually, I can't see anywhere. Tiny bit pink there. That's it. But yeah, we would not even notice that with us. Okay, what right, else well, you say? Just the last thing I was going to say is that what I find fascinating is that a lot of the time we get questions that are to do with more like, you know, the broadening of sexual empowerment and, and gender relations and, you know, some like fairly like new age stuff. But this is such a like retro question. This is the sort of thing that has been happening through centuries. Yeah. And, and also what's interesting is that it seems like nowadays we're above it. Like, this is such an old-fashioned thing, social yes, convention, so. but actually, we still do it. Everyone still gossips and bitches and moans about who's dating who, and can you believe it? They just broke up with them last week. I can't believe it. Oh <laughs> Scandalous. <laughs> you know, like, we still... But yeah, but that's, a, yeah, again, that's such a, like, basic agony on question or whatever, mm -hmm. just in general, like, a very basic concept as such, and yet we're tackling it. It's still, it's still real. Oh, yeah. look, I also got wine of mine. Hey! Should How I, did I do that? Should I, okay. No, it's fine. This is very old. No, no. <laughs> Look, no. I'm just gonna rub it into my trousers because they're no, red. No, let's do the same operation. No, because I'm gonna get wet. I don't want to get wet. Wait, on my it's porch. just the wet wipe. Look, look, look. No. It's done. It's done. It's done. Just that. Just like that, and you can throw it somewhere. Mm, the wet wipe's so really good. I'm just really hoping no one's seeing my bits. <laughs> that, 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 I'm masticated. No, no, those bits. Oh, you'll draw it. I think in your bits. <laughs> no, other, other bits. Demystified. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, last question. Last question. Wow. God damn. Thank you. It's, it's good, good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Should I do the honors? I think it's your turn then. Yeah. Might yeah. As well. Why not? And this is the last one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> we love all our questions. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Maria and Rowan. You spelled my name wrong, but it's fine. We can deal with it. Did they? Yeah. Oh, it sounds like Jake. Uh. Um. <laughs> uh, love the podcast. I mean, what, it's funny how people call it a podcast. Yeah, I, I guess it makes because sense. they have it on the background, they actually look it up pretty yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, again, we had a lot of questions about turning into an actual podcast. I just, I can't be fucked to do more work. Honestly, there's websites to do that where you just put a YouTube in literally. and it comes out as an audio. Just do that. Just I do just that. CBF. Like, we, I literally don't have time. Yeah. Like, we already spend a lot of time on this. Yeah. Love the podcast, but I'm still catching up on all episodes. So forgive me if this is a repeat question. It isn't, though, which is nice. Me and my long term partner have recently moved from a long term monogamous relationship into non monogamy. Yay! It has been discussed for many years and we are very happy with most of it. However, I will struggle with I still struggle with feelings of inferiority and jealousy 
everyone knows, especially as I don't feel my partner has respected the rules, guidelines we agreed on when we started, namely clarity and discretion. Clarity and discretion. I uh, try to discuss with my partner how I feel about this, but often get a pushback saying, what does that really mean anyway? When I feel what's very clear to me, any advice? We need to know what your fucking rules and guidelines are with your partner. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I kind of got excited about this question, but now I've read it out loud. I'm a bit like, this is kind of tricky because like, it sounds like someone is just being a dick and you're actually quite nice. It depends on what your rules are. It's really so, hard to say. So it's so tricky, for instance, like I, I, I have I've been in... Um, it kind of is a bit different because I've been polyamorous for years as such, but the way that we started polyamory years ago was under completely different rules than how things ended up as such. And and I can see, and that was mostly partial, mostly to me, mostly down to me actually, which is not a great look, I suppose. But I mean, again, everyone's happy, there's no, no one's hurt, everything's okay. Um, uh, but um, I can see why, like I said, like, I mean, I don't know, why someone would be frustrated when um, there's a certain change in rules and you feel like only one partner is only like sticking to those whereas the other one isn't as such? Well yeah, I mean to me the like basic issue is communication like when I had my first ever poly relationship I was told straight off the bat, first shag, I'm poly by the way and I was like, oh okay, and I read the ethical slot cover to cover and I did all of the exercises and took all the like notes and guidelines and stuff and then it turns out like as you know, like different poly has different rules and what makes sense on paper when you're like, this sounds like the perfect theoretical way we do it, well you actually end up being the kind of guidelines that you stick to are vastly different from that. So I would allow a partner some wiggle room in this in regarding to how it maps out in practice if they communicated that to you and then just dismiss what you were saying is like a problem. Yeah, that's, that's the, the issue. point. It's like the whole like what does that really mean anyway? That sounds like mm. gaslighting. Mm -hmm. It sounds like gaslighting. It's like, look, babes, but we're like no more gonna So like, whatever issues you have with me, what? Well, you're not okay with being poly anymore. Yeah. Well, you just sound like you're being a dick. And I'm sorry, like, even if you're poly, you are allowed to bring up jealousy issues with your partner. It's 100%. not like a rule, like, oh, now I'm not allowed to be jealous anymore. No bullshit. The point is that you work through the jealousy, and that jealousy does not exclude the potentiality of your partner having another partner. Not that you just don't talk about jealousy. Also, like, just be, like, the fact that you're polyamorous or whatever, non monogamous, that doesn't feel at all, that doesn't mean at all that you don't have the senses of inferiority mm -hmm. and jealousy. Funny anecdote, it's not that funny, it's not even an anecdote, it's my actual life. But, um, <laughs> it's not funny, it's not an anecdote. <laughs> but, um, so I've been, as I say, kind of in a polyamorous relationship with someone uh, and for years, and I've been the polyamorous one, whereas they were monogamous and such, but then down the line, years down the line, uh, they found someone, and it's, you know, been great, and they were, um, you know, kind of very open about it and all of the stuff, but they found someone who has never heard of polyamory, has never really been engaged with it, and 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 they needed to be introduced i suppose to all the like lingo or whatever and then they saw me as someone like basically because i have been playing almost for years or whatever that's as someone that probably oh you know doesn't have any of those feelings you know if you're already with jealousy and like it was fascinating to, to kind of see how like my partner had to explain to their partner be like no, just because she's polyamorous and has been for years doesn't mean that she no. does not jealous or doesn't feel inferior or doesn't have all these insecurities. So you don't need to see her as this like mysterious someone that is just like all put together, she's polyamorous, that's it, she's got yeah. all of this and she doesn't have any of those feelings. No, I'm mortal just like you are and I have all those feelings and, and so anyone can do. So basically, yeah, just because you've decided to be polyamorous and I have been for years um, that doesn't mean that you don't, you just don't have those feelings. Nobody so does just not like, feel insecure about their partner at any time. So that doesn't it? Exist. It seems to me like you're beating yourself down over the fact that you are now non monogamous and yet you have those feelings. Like bullshit. No, it's Join down to your partner. Exactly, but it's down to your partner to reassure you. Yeah. And it sounds to me like they're doing it or in a shitty way, or they're kind of pretty much not doing it. Yeah. Not to say that this doesn't happen in monogamous relationships, obviously. It totally does, but we're talking about poly right now. Oh, like, yeah. Because, like, yeah, we can talk about jealousy and insecurity and monogamy until whatever. the house going to hurt. But the point is, yeah, like, your partner is not respecting the rules because the rules of poly, I'm sorry, no matter what book you read or what guidelines you follow, include caring for your current partner's needs and, like, emotional state. And I don't mean molly, molly coddling. I mean. What is molly coddling? Molly coddling is, like, overbearing like care like mothering i guess in a way 
Is that like, you know, the daddy thing? No, no, mothering and like, um, like patronizing the caring, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm, but, off your <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm um, just... What were they saying? What were they saying? What were they saying? Money coddling, money coddling. No, but it doesn't. It doesn't mean money coddling, but it does mean if your partner partner is experiencing senses of jealousy, maybe that means you need to relook at the like contract you brought up. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe they just mean need reassuring that they are a vital and important and loved part of your life. Maybe like I feel like your your fucking partner if you're watching this, not you to be honest. Make them because yeah, like they are not doing the work to make you feel loved and cared for, and if you feel like they're not obeying the degree. That, uh, the like terms of your agreement, then you need to sit down and either re-term the terms, or like make them realize that they're not sticking to them. It is not acceptable for them to blow your like concerns out the window of like totally. it's not a big deal or whatever. Because yeah, like you say, that is gaslighting. Hundred percent. And like you are still allowed to feel jealousy and insecurity in non-monogamy. Hundred percent. Like you will never not. Hundred percent. That doesn't mean it's not valid. You're, you're not working and you're not good enough for being poly. There is no such thing as like, no. Ah. Yes. Yes. I'm so angry. It makes me so angry. Yeah. And the thing is that like, people believe in this, like, oh, okay, so, well, I guess I'm that now, and I'm mature now, so yeah, I can totally just bottle my yeah. feelings. I'm like, oh, you know, like, like it's, it's a maturity thing. That's such a thing. Oh like, yeah, it's like um, I'm mature now. Hence, no. like, I don't, I won't feel those feelings. Fuck off. Fuck that. If you don't ever feel any insecurity and jealousy of your partner, maybe you're just not into your partner. Well. Or they're really, really good at reassuring you, to be fair. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah, really, yeah. it's not necessarily just down to that as such. Like, maybe they're just fucking great at, like, <clears throat> surrounding you and hugging you with their love. And also, okay, what I will also say, the, 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 the example that I gave earlier about, like, you know, um, my partner's partner finding out that I also have these feelings was also due to the fact that my partner changed the way that we do polyamory mm -hmm. where I wasn't necessarily allowed for a while to meet them whereas the way that I do poly stuff is like everyone knows everyone everyone's pals with everyone not even necessarily like I don't make them like be like besties or whatever but you know there's a certain amount of solidarity and understanding that everyone's going through a fucking weird yeah. time right now and demystifying the other 100% exactly like yeah just being like the fear of the unknown that's not a thing anymore and so yeah oh god um, but but yeah, just basically get rid of the, that whole like yeah feeling that the other one is somehow more advanced than the feelings of like no jealousy or no inferiority that sort of bullshit. So um, so it's the I think my partner actually took a, a more difficult route where where we were kind of separated. In a way, I think that's what brought the the tensions up. So if there's a way for you to meet the other uh, for you guys to establish that solidarity especially if it's like a if it's a, tri a tri not a triangle but if it's a one partner one person two partners thing you need to have a solidarity between you two you need to take the mick out of the third one you know what i mean you need to understand that you are just two people that are in love with one person but hopefully that person is giving you enough love back you know and that it's confusing for everyone involved of course it's weird and confusing for everyone involved look at us like trying to completely defy any sort of like societal expectations of what of like of what relationship is meant to be of course it's full of hurdles and fuck anyone that tells you otherwise fuck any person that goes like yeah poly is just like you know where you're just like like down mm. with like just so you know, you just like got rid of like the that society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like, you know, you're not like the societal norm mm. that tells you that you should be just like with one person. You actually opened up. Yeah, someone that makes poly seem edgy rather than just like run, the way in which they run. feel. Yeah. Run from that. Yeah. Straight up. It's not trendy. It's a way of like maneuvering relationships that's just as tricky and fraught and, and rewarding as monogamy. Sure. But yeah, no better, no worse. And exactly what Rowan said. Anyone that makes makes it sound that it's some sort of like cooler or higher way of yeah. doing things recognize that's absolute bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just trying to manipulate you. I just want to focus on. Um, so they said, I don't feel like I can't have respect my rules, guidelines, it's namely clarity and discretion. Like obviously you haven't given us like info here. Yeah. But discretion, I understand. 
but I don't know whether you mean you wish they told you more or you wish they told you less because mm. again again yeah it comes all down to like you need to chat this through like if you just said to your partner like so we we agree on clarity and discretion what do you actually mean <laughs> what is clarity is clarity i'm going on a date or is clarity i've fallen in love or is clarity, or is clarity i've had sex like yeah clarity is like i am never going to mention them to you yeah and yeah and, and is discretion like i can't tell you where i'm going on the friday yeah. or is yeah. or is discretion yeah i went out with someone but no biggie or this question like i'm never gonna tell my friends or something yeah i don't yeah like if you want to resubmit this question with more detail about what your guidelines are with your partner and also what your communication strategies and agreements have been with your partner it sounds like you haven't agreed to communication strategies but you have agreed to guidelines and i feel like that's just not a good model so i've got this desperate face of wait, are we out of wine no oh no no <laughs> See, this is a difficult relationship. Us and the a wine. dependent one. But it's us versus the wine. Yeah. The wine is not communicating to me how much wine they have left in the bottle, and I just don't feel like I can handle it right now. Sorry, we're not mocking you. We're mocking ourselves. Yeah, cool. Well, come on, like. Um, I would like to think that people that are sending us questions know, like, the brand at this point. Yeah. Yeah. If you're looking for, like, you know, whatever, Guardian Agony on that just tells you to. Well, Mariella Frostrov. She's fucking terrible. I'm interested in hearing your views on that. Do you like her? I I am ambivalent. I think she's just you know. I've read her columns since I was ten. Fascinating. Because my mum always buys the um, the Guardian and Observer on the weekends. Is there any left? Top there. Is the, well, okay, don't. Okay, okay, let's have let's okay. let's get equal. Okay. okay. Um, okay. I think. Is Elon okay with this? Hey, yeah, Elon, thanks name. for this. Come on. Okay, I just did it. Fuck it. But so between. thank you for the beer and then the other person we're not sure whether you'd be okay or not i'm pretty sure the format yeah. has thank you for the booze but yeah i've read my restaurant because my mom buys the guardian and the observer every weekend so i always read the magazine because you know i'm a child and so i've read her columns for fuck, like 15 years i mean it just seems basic okay sometimes she's been harmful and i can't draw to memory now so the time in which she was harmful a lot of the time she's basic yeah yeah but sometimes she has like said things that are to me directly opposed to what they should do but, okay. I can't. but yeah we're Wait, better than her anyway. if that like flea bag girl was able to turn her edinburgh show into a bbc but she's thing. posh as tits precisely that's what i'm thinking like surely this should be something along those lines yeah but neither of us sound like phoebe Wallace bridge we don't even have double barrel sardines, Mario. Any BBC producers watching? I'd be fine with Channel 4 as well. I'd be fine with like... Vice? ITV. I was thinking Vice should just like <laughs> buy us. ITV, no. You wouldn't be fine with ITV. Yeah, what's, the, what's, the, what's the line? No, they're just like really right wing. Actually? Yeah. Channel 4 is actually quite left wing. My parents say Channel 4 is now the, the one they watch instead yeah, of BBC. Yeah, same, same, same. Yeah. Anyways, okay, so I think we're drawing up yeah. conclusions here. Sorry, I just, I'd like to think that that, that that was as wide as we can go on that particular thing. But please feel free to bring back with more information and yes. a more nuanced question because, yeah, we're working with what we've got, which is basically like, Polyamory is great, but it's not better than rules to me, but also you need rules and guidelines and communication and not be dicks to each other. But we also actually legit have experience in this. Yeah. That's why we are do like feel comfortable talking about this. Whereas you know, there are other questions where I no, I definitely don't feel Yeah no no no. We've both had poly relationships, particularly Marianne, we've had a lot of poly relationships, like we are both aware of the field. When I sound that way, it's just like I've, I've they've been a long time, years yeah. and years. Like this is not just like in and like in no. and out sort of thing. But that's what makes it relationship not like I suck with lots of people. No, no. Which we have also done. Suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> well, on that note, I feel like, yeah, it's the end, right? I think that's a bit, but like, I will say, if it, like, we've been dreading going back to this because we had a bit of a break since I was traveling and then just lots of like admin and that sort of stuff. Um, and we're both working a lot. 100%. And I just, it's been a bit terrifying to get back to it, but I feel like it will kind of yeah. back in the old. No, we're here. It's yeah. actually just, we're down the pub with a mate, which is the whole point. Yes, which is the whole point. Now, we hope that you get that. Um, thanks so much for watching. Again, hype us up around and everything. Again, it, it does. It's exhausting for the both of us in many, many shapes or forms, materially, uh, social capital, um, employability. Yeah, I went to an academic conference two weeks ago, 
like the most important academic conference in my field in the UK and a bunch of people were like oh yeah I've seen your sex show so you know that's a thing we so have to that, contend with but the thing is people talk uh, no one tells me that I don't know I mean a few people have been lovely enough to see I don't know if it's good or bad that yeah. random like professors from Oxford tell me they've seen my like sex show but you know it is a thing that is actually having wider ramifications in our life I guess is the point yes um yeah, so thank you so much. Um, we are... <clears throat> There's been a bit of an issue with people sending us like repeated, re kind of repetitive yes. questions. We are asking you with huge love and heart and solidarity and all of that. Just please, please, please look through the archive because it's just like the more time we spend on repetitive questions, the less time we give to questions that are actually like unique and that uh, we haven't covered before and I know everyone feels like their story is unique I'm sounding a bit brutal now but like there are recurring themes yeah. and, and um, I think we need to as we're growing we do just need to become a bit more selective so if you be, could be graceful yeah. enough to be looking into that that'd be really like really my mum is kindly arranging the playlist on different themes so you can find if your theme is coming up and like if you think after watching everything you are still unique then spell it out why. Yes. Give us more detail about what's specific about you, about where you live, about your, your social yes. media, about the things that we can work on beyond just like, I can't date. Because you, you know what? Probably. Yeah, you can probably, and we relate to that, but we have like now a uh, like 20 question yeah. long playlist about what to do if you can't date. So yeah. like, Oh, we also at some point really do just want to squeeze in something that we've been planning since the beginning of this project, which is the incel special. Uh, where we're basically gonna be taking on like look at Reddit threads to do like in, uh, issues around uh, involuntary celibacy and just answering their questions, which we think is a really important political project. So okay, so it kind of sounds bad as in like we still want to continue having questions and answering your individual questions, but we're just trying to be a bit more selective as such and also at some point squeeze in the special. So um, yeah, because yeah. our project is twofold. It's one on the one hand making like lefties better lovers on the other hand is we really do want to try and combat the Jordan Peterson drive towards the only we want to yeah and like we want people who are drifting towards the alt-right hopefully to get a better form of relationship advice and it's very hard to reach out to the community and probably the incel special is going to give us lots of hate and lots of doxing fine but we have think it's enough important. labor to like i don't know enough i guess capacity to be mm. able to deal with this um so yeah so Thank you, and please, as always, like, I don't know, uh, tell us about this to your pals, like, yeah. retweet the rest, follow us. Sorry to be, I hate the fact that I've now become the guy that, like, has that lingo. It's like, oh, follow, like, re subscribe, retweet. It's because we it's live off. Really yeah. And also, we don't make any money, so we don't actually live off it, but it's, it's the only thing that makes us feel like you value what we're doing, and we know you do value what we're doing, but we like to feel it too. And the thing is that, like, if you can't, like, send us though, which is absolutely fine, um, <sighs> more than absolutely fine uh just yeah just if it's okay for you in your surroundings just do share us around like on the social media or whatever also it is a political project so it does just help more people and as you see from the questions like they are the people are desperate and so it does it's extremely rewarding and yeah 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 um so so next time we, again, yeah, next we're not time. sure when that is when we have enough I guess reason to do this as such. Um, as always, have, I, I've had a great time. Oh, seriously? Oh, okay. You said that you started to be like, as always. I was like, oh, no, I'm on I was, one I was just gonna give you like a lot of compliments, being like, as always. It was a pleasure, darling. It was a pleasure, darling. <laughs> and now, now we, we can actually be the waste of the day. Oh, we can come out wine, so. To the office. It's too late. Yeah. <laughs> it, I guess we'll do the cut. No, are you saying too late? <laughs> Aye. All right. All right. Good times. Good times. <laughs>